going to continue with a risk of some showers, so have a rain jacket handy. For Scotland, it might well turn a little bit dry here as we go past midnight, but that may allow it to turn fairly chilly. Elsewhere, temperatures not falling much lower than about 5 to 7 degrees in the southern half of the UK. So for New Year's Day itself, for the northern half of the UK, we continue that showery theme, a mixture of some bright spells and some showers. But for the southern half, actually, it will turn drier and brighter for a time. So a brief respite from the unsettled weather here, but uh, it's not going to last for too long, especially down towards the very far southwest of the UK. Some cloud and some rain will return later on in the day. That warm feeling inside from Boxed Boilers, sponsors of weather on GB News. Twenty twenty four, a battleground year. The year the nation decides. As the parties gear up their campaigns for the next general election. Who will be left standing when the British people make one of the biggest decisions of their lives? Who will rise and who will fall? Let's find out together. For every moment, the highs, the lows, the twists and turns. We'll be with you for every step of this journey. In twenty twenty four, GB News is Britain's election channel. GB News, unlike other broadcasters, isn't obsessed with the London-Westminster bubble. We think there's a nation beyond the M25, and that's why we talk about the issues that matter across the land. Join me on State of the Nation, 8 to 9 o'clock, Monday to Thursday, on GB News. Daisy's listening, and you should too. Wake up to the headlines with Headliners every morning at 5 a.m. We treat you to the day's biggest stories before anyone else, seven days a week. You can catch up on everything you need to know before you've even had your kippers. Mmm. Headliners every morning at 5 a.m. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Andrew Doyle. Join me at 7 o'clock every Sunday night for Free Speech Nation, the show where I tackle the week's biggest stories in politics and current affairs with the help of my two comedian panellists and a variety of special guests. Free Speech Nation, Sunday nights from 7 on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Now then, Lee Anderson here. Join me on GB News on my show, The Real World, every Friday at 7 p.m. I'm not eating bloody cat. Are you Delicious. Mental? In your mouth. OK, here comes a, here comes a train. <laughs> Reminds me of the scene in Singing in the Rain. Adam, is that a good one? Oh, whoa! Join me at 7 on GB News, Britain's news channel. What you get for breakfast is something that, if we do our jobs right, you will wake up to news that you didn't know the night before. It's a conversation. It's not just me and Eamon. We want to get to know you, and we want you to get to know us. From 6, it's Breakfast with Eamon and Isabel. Monday to Thursdays on GB News. Britain's news channel. Have a great Saturday night with me, Leo Carson, this Saturday night showdown. It's a crazy world out there, so come and make fun of it with me, my panel of comedians, and a couple of people who actually know what they're talking about. This Saturday night showdown is your front row ticket to the clown show. Every Saturday, only on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Good afternoon, Britain. Good afternoon, Britain. Join us, Tom and Emily, to find out what's happening in the heart of Westminster and why it matters to you. Weekdays from midday, we bring you the most compelling stories from across the United Kingdom. And from your doorstep to our inbox. That's right, we want to hear from you. GB News. Britain's news channel. Every Sunday from 11, join Michael Portillo. There will be topical discussion, looking at the week before and the week to come. So kick back and relax at 11am on Sundays on GB News with me, Michael Portillo. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. When the news happens, it happens here. And really important breaking news. Breaking news this morning. On TV, radio and online, the news starts here on Britain's Newsroom. All the biggest stories and the answers that you need from across the UK and beyond. Join Britain's Newsroom from 9.30 on GB News. The People's Channel, Britain's news channel.
Hello and Happy New Year's Eve. Welcome to GB News Sunday. I'm Dawn Neesom and for the next three hours I'll be keeping you company on TV, online and on digital radio. Making sure you're informed this New Year's Eve, keeping it fun and light as well because it's a Sunday, it's New Year's Eve. Come on, it's the last weekend of the year. And we wish goodbye to 2023. I don't even remember most of it, do you? Uh, coming up this hour, we'll be crossing live to Sydney at the top of the next hour as Australia begins to to see in the new year with probably the most spectacular firework display anywhere in the world. Plus, I'll be speaking to pub, club and bar owners across the country, finding out how they're preparing for the New Year's Eve celebrations and how you can make sure your night goes with a bang as well. But will people even make it to their New Year's Eve celebrations with train disruption threatening to uh, dis make hundreds of people's journeys home for the New Year with their family? Um, a, a nightmare, basically, and the planes aren't much better either. Cancelled trains due to staff shortage, delayed trains, extreme weather, flooding in the Eurostar, you name it, it's a nightmare. Travel guru Simon Corder will give us all the latest and have plenty of advice for you. And the XL bully ban comes into force today with owners forced to muzzle and lead their dogs in public spaces. And I'm afraid it's game over for some bullies which haven't found a home. But is it down to the dog or the owner? Uh, we're here from a dog trainer with all the news on that. So all that and much, much more. But it's all about you. So get in touch. Send me your thoughts on gbviews at gbnews.com or message me on our socials. Really simple, just at gbnews. But first, let's have a look at what the news headlines are with Tatiana, shall we? Dawn, thank you very much and good afternoon. This is the latest from the GB Newsroom. Look forward to 2024 with pride and optimism. That's the message from the Prime Minister as Britain prepares to celebrate the new year. Rishi Sunak promised a brighter future in his New Year's message with tax cuts and a reduction in national insurance. He described 2023 as a momentous year, which saw inflation halved and record investment in the NHS. That's despite junior doctors in England planning their longest walkout in NHS history next month. The Prime Minister says his New Year's resolution is to keep driving forward. Inflation is set to fall further, cutting the cost of living for everyone and we're not stopping there. We're going further to grow our economy by reducing debt, cutting taxes and rewarding hard work, building secure supplies of energy here at home, backing British business and delivering world-class education. Meanwhile, the Labour leader says the power to shape the future of Britain rests in everyone's hands. Sir Keir Starmer's message offered a preview of his party's election campaign, saying 2024 needs to give Britain its future back. In the Labour Party, we've been building to this for four years. We're confident we have a plan that can move our country forward, end the cost of living crisis take back our streets, get the NHS back on its feet, cheaper energy bills for your home, more opportunities for your children. The US Navy has thwarted an attempt by militants from the Houthi group to board a container ship in the Red Sea. The US says four vessels from Houthi-controlled areas in Yemen fired at the ship and came dangerously close to boarding it. In response, helicopters from nearby US warships sunk three of the boats. The Houthis, who are backed by Iran, have stepped up attacks on merchant ships as they travel through one of the world's most important freight routes. The group says the attacks are in response to the conflict in Gaza. Boris Johnson's former chief advisor says Rishi Sunak tried to strike what he called a secret deal in a bid to win the next election. Dominic Cummings told the Sunday Times that he was prepared to help the Tories win if he was assured the most critical issues were prioritised. That reportedly includes nuclear weapons infrastructure, future pandemics and artificial intelligence. The proposal was apparently rejected by the Prime Minister. Number 10 did not deny the report, but says Mr Cummings was not offered a position. 
And as we've been hearing, American XL bully dogs must be kept on a lead in England and Wales under new rules that come into force today. They'll need to be muzzled in public and it's illegal to breed, sell or to abandon them. Owners are urged to apply for a certificate of exemption for current pets by the end of January before it becomes illegal to keep any unapproved XL bully dog. The ban follows a series of deadly attacks this year. Eurostar services are back in service today, but the company's warning of further delays and busy stations. All Eurostar services between London and Paris came to a halt yesterday as water flooded a tunnel beneath the Thames. Many passengers were left facing expensive hotel bills as others desperately searched for alternative travel routes. Eurostar says at least one tunnel can now be used, but there are speed restrictions in place and stations are expected to be very busy. Southeastern and Thameslink rail services are also expecting delays. Now, loudspeakers and tourist groups are to be banned in Venice as the Italian city looks to clamp down on rowdy visitors. From June, groups larger than 25 people will be blocked from gathering in public areas. The city is also cracking down on the use of noisy speakers amid complaints from locals. They cause confusion and disturbance. It follows the introduction of a £4.30 entry fee for tourists in September. Venice is one of Europe's most popular destinations. The residents have complained that too many visitors are ruining the city's character. And the new year has arrived in Auckland as New Zealand's biggest city welcomed 2024 with a spectacular fireworks display. <laughs> The Sky Tower was alight in sparks and colours as the country became one of the first to chime in the new year. Though it was beaten by the Pacific nation of Kiribati, which entered 2024 at 10 o'clock this morning. This is GB News across the UK on TV, in your car on digital radio and on your smart speaker by saying, play GB News. Now back to Dawn. Thanks very much, Tatiana. You're watching Doing Neeson on New Year's Eve. Happy New Year's Eve, everybody. Now, let's get started, shall we? Lots to get through and lots to talk about and lots of fun to be had. Now, I've got some great company joining me on my panel today. Former special advisor to Michael Gove, Charlie Rowley, and journalist and broadcaster Benjamin Bussemer. Thank you very much for joining me. Two lovely young men all afternoon keeping me company. Lovely. Right, now, but first, <laughs> uh, New Year is almost upon us, just in in case you haven't noticed, and the countdown to 2024 begins. Attention will turn to how you are celebrating. Tonight on GB News, as the clock strikes midnight, we'll be broadcasting live from various corners of the country. But before then, we're eager to hear from you. What are your plans? What are you doing? Are you having that debate that we have in our household? I don't want to go out. I want to go out. It happens every year. None of us wins. We always end up in a row. But what are your plans? The more unconventional, the merrier your stories and traditions are, we want to hear. What makes it a special night for you? Why is it so special? Why do we make so much of it? Um, joining me now to explain why it's the biggest night of the year for one sector in particular uh, is Alex Proud, owner of the Proud Group Venues. Alex, thank you very much for joining me today. Now, it's the biggest night of the year, I'm assuming, for the hospitality sector in general. Yes, I mean, massively so. Um, you know, tonight we'll probably take nearly two weeks worth of money in one night. And after a tough few years for the hospitality sector, nights like tonight are, are really important for us, our staff, and, and for survival, sadly. And so, so what, what are your plans with your group tonight? What, what, what are you doing? What's, what's happening? Well, we've got a busy time. The, the main venue, Proud Embankment, which is right on the, the, the uh, River Thames on the embankment, and we'll see the fireworks. That, that We've got about 300 people coming to see a big cabaret show, have a five-course meal, then the, see the fireworks, and then we have a nightclub till five in the morning. And then I have two other venues, one in the City of London, one in Brighton, where, again, lots of people having a cabaret dinner, very 
sophisticated. It's a nice night because you can go out, have dinner, see a show, dance afterwards, stay out to the early hours and not have to move anywhere. So the idea is to relax and enjoy it and to stop those arguments that we all have. Yes, oh, you, 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 yeah, you're in my world here with this one. Alex, what is the trick to actually making a successful New Year's night? I mean, I must admit, I always think, right, OK, I really want to go out, but I'm so tired. And then I fall asleep just before the clock strikes and, you know, you wake up and you've missed it. So what's the trick to getting through through and pacing yourself so you do actually see the new year in. OK, if you want all the secrets, I mean, it starts off meticulous preparation. It's boring, but New Year's Eve is, is stressful. It's like Christmas, isn't it? If we, if we plan it, decide who's doing what, who's going out and buying the booze, what are we eating? Let's, um, you know, not have to cook. Let's get pre-cooked food, whack it in the oven so we can all relax. We did all the cooking on Christmas Day. Let's now enjoy New Year's Eve. This is a fun night for everyone. Make sure, have much booze you think you want, double it. Also, the other thing is pace yourself. Eat lots of food, line your stomach, don't get wine drunk because then that's where the arguments happen. Have a couple of shots, go to a, a, a tall glass. Also drink water all through the night. If you ever meet a Russian, the secret to Russians is they drink a glass of water between every other drink. That's another tip. And have fun. Remember, you're enjoying yourself. If you feel like sitting down and, and staring at the TV for half an hour, sit down and stare at the TV for half an hour. Don't feel forced to have fun. There's nothing worse than forced fun. So enjoy yourself, be selfish, be communicative and plan it out and you'll have a great night. There's no expectation. It's all about enjoying yourself. Too much pressure on us. Alex, thank you so much for joining us and good luck with tonight. Hope all goes well and a very happy new year to you and yours. Thank you very much thank for joining you so us. Much. Thank, you. Um, thank you. Right, OK. Now I'm going to talk to my lovely panel about this. First of all, Charlie and Benjamin, um, how are you both celebrating? Have you got plans or are you going to be like me and probably flake out at nine o'clock? Well, I just love that he talked about eating on New Year's Eve. I just I go straight for the drinking. <laughs> is that but this is the problem, though. This is the problem, isn't it? I mean, pacing yourself is hard. No. No, I mean, I'm glad I'm doing this show because it's stopping me from starting on the champagne. <laughs> <laughs> you champagne socialist. No, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, hold exactly. on. That's and plus, it's ten past midday. <laughs> <laughs> um, but do you know what? I, I find New Year's Eve a terrible stress because mm. any other weekend of the year, you know, it's pretty easy to find, you know, if you're lucky, it's easy to find friends that, you know, might want to have one drink with or go out for a meal or something like that. You don't worry about it if there's no one around. You entertain yourself. And then New Year's Eve comes along and it's just this enormous pressure that you must have a good time, it must be a fabulous night, it must be excessive, and I find that all a bit stressful. So, you know, I'm not quite the age where I, I want to have my feet up at home. I had to do that during COVID, like everybody, mm. it was a bit glum. But I, I envy the people that can enjoy it that way because they managed to circumvent the stress of New Year's Eve. How about you, Charlie? What are you up to? Well, I've been very lucky this year, I think, because I didn't have any plans until about two days ago. And um, even as I was on the train in, somebody messaged to say, would I like to go for dinner at about oh. six? And they've booked somewhere. So I thought, well, I won't say no for free lunch. And, um, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but then I'm going to, I am going to um, uh, uh, the Terrace on the House of Commons later ah. on to watch the uh, Oh, watch wow, the fireworks. so you're going to get to see the fireworks as well. I, I've never been before. I, mean, I did have opportunities in the past, but um, it might be the last year that I'll be invited. So, as a Tory, so, um, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. So, so I'll couldn't, be there next year. I couldn't say no. <laughs> I couldn't say no. So I'll be having a lovely meal, a meal and then um, uh, watching the fireworks and... Um, uh, having a, a merry old time. Brilliant. So you're not... I mean, uh, there's a horrible story today that a fifth of under-25s are now teetotal. I mean, I know you're slightly older than that, the two of you, but... That is a vicious scary. slur, Dawn. <laughs> <laughs> only slightly. I didn't say only slightly. Yeah, think for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, I think... No, you're right that a lot of... You know, I went to speak at Exeter University recently and I was fascinated by how many of them uh, didn't drink. But they also, I dare say, they look, they'll look a lot healthier when they hit their 30s, like, like Charlie and me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, but the fact is that actually, you know, getting too drunk, drinking too much, you get lots of people that wake up on New Year's Day with a hangover, with mistakes, maybe have, having had a bit mm. of a row with people they don't oh, want yes. to have a row with. And so, do you know what? I think there's a good logic to not doing that because we all think about our New Year's resolutions, about being a better version of ourselves, and then we all go and get hammered, do something stupid and wake up at midday on the 1st of January, which isn't a great start. No, uh, how about you? you no. I, I think that's absolutely right. And I think um, young people today are changing what they're sort of drinking and what they're intaking because of the social media sort mm. of sense yes, of the body. Yes, yes, good point. Image. And so you see lots of people now, people don't drink pints of ale or lager. I mean, yeah. I still like a lager. 
I'll swallow anything, but um, <laughs> I, you know, uh, but the more people are drinking sort of slim, slim line drinks with gins and, yes, and yeah. uh, spirits and, and 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 mixes. So it's not the you know the the, the, the traditional drinking that you'd expect at Christmas and New so, Year. So there's the advice that, that you shouldn't get too drunk and you shouldn't spend all night partying. <laughs> None of, neither of us will live. No, it, none but. of which you know, you listen to your own <laughs> advice. Thank you very much, gents. We'll be coming back to you soon. Now, um, the big question is about from drinking and staying up is how are you going to get to see your relatives, your loved ones, where you want to be on New Year's Eve? Uh, Eurostar was having a complete meltdown yesterday and has said it is running all services today to London, Paris, and Brussels and Amsterdam. Uh, New Year plans for thousands were in ruin after flooding yesterday um, in a tunnel under the River Thames led to the cancellation of all services between London and Paris. And it was a nightmare. And I think they are still struggling to get passengers where they need to be. Uh, joining us now is travel expert Simon Corder. Um, Simon, what is going on? Are we back to normal on Eurostar? now? Well, look, I've been at uh, London St Pancras International since early on this morning, as I was yesterday. Um, I've just returned from there indeed, but because uh, it was getting very cold and very um, uh, <laughs> uh, very quiet, and that was a good sign. But look, let me just take you back uh, 24 hours, and you had the sight of all 41 Eurostar mm. trains from London to Paris, Amsterdam, Brussels, back. That represents over 30,000 passengers wow. who were told, sorry, your New Year travel plans are in tatters. Um, it's uh, been an awful lot better today. You can see things moving actually fairly uh, swiftly there. And very few people actually queuing. There was a big throng this morning, first thing, but that was because everybody who, thought, who was booked on today's trains thought, crikey, better get there early. Anyway, that was soon cleared and it's all now looking quite um, quite sensible. However, those 30,000 people mm. are being told there's no chance of travelling to date. There aren't going to be any extra trains. So you're going to have to just jolly well wait and um, uh, we'll get you back when we can, which could be uh, New Year's Day. It could be a couple of days from now. Absolutely miserable for uh, people who were caught up by that um, flood in the Thames Tunnel. They go to the back of the queue after everybody who's got existing reservations. Oh, that sounds so unfair. And Simon, there's also a story that the um, the airlines are ripping people off by charging extortionate fares to get to Paris and 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 capitalising on people's misery, basically. Well, um, I think the airlines would simply say one word to you, Dawn algorithms. They would just <laughs> explain that um, if there's a lot of sudden demand for their fares, their uh, mm. systems are programmed to reflect that. And it's a very good way of allocating scarce capacity. I couldn't believe it last night. I was tracking the fares coming from Paris to London because a large number of people have been in touch saying, help, what do I do? And uh, I said, well, you, you know, you can, you can fly. And uh, mid-afternoon, it was about £350 one way. The last ticket on British Airways for travel to day from Paris to London got sold for almost £700 wow. for a basically 40-minute flight. Now, actually, I don't fault the airlines. I mean, in the reverse situation, you know, if all the flights to Amsterdam and Paris and Brussels are cancelled, then Eurostar is going to put up its flights and uh, true, its fares true. and uh, uh, good, good luck to it. Um, and and uh, it's just a reflection, I'm afraid, of the fact that mm. you've got so much demand at a time when everybody is emotionally invested in getting yes. where they need to be. Um, and it's just so sad that there's still going to be people stuck out of position in, in budget hotels um, w when they should be with their loved ones. Not how you want to see in the new year. Simon, just quickly, how are the ports faring today? Dover and Folkestone are operating OK? Yeah, they're, they're, they're working pretty well. Actually, they're going to be a bit more crowded because lots of people are coming back by boat. Um, it's not as easy as it used to be, but I'm talking to people who are sailing from New Haven to Dieppe. Uh, there's another couple came in from Caen in Normandy to Portsmouth this morning and then suddenly found there were all kinds of rail replacement <laughs> things going on on the trains. Mm. But uh, they, they are all getting in. And if you're driving, uh, not very long queues at uh, Dover to get onto the ferries, get through passport control. So um, you're in a relatively good position. And I hope everybody gets where they need to be and has a wonderful new year. And that we start 2024 um, with a bit less chaos than we've had this year, if you don't mind. Is that going to be your prediction, though, Simon? 
Not a prediction at all. No, it's a hope, desperate hope that I'm clinging to as I as I um, uh, emulate uh, Benjamin and Charlie and uh, have a gentle sip to uh, uh, welcome in the new year. Brilliant. Thank you so much. That's Simon Calder there. Thank you very much for joining us. And, and a very happy new year to you and yours. I, well, I mean, thankfully... Eurostar is operating, but I thought what Simon was saying there was appalling that you know the people that couldn't travel yesterday are now at the back of the queue. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I do agree with the sympathy with airlines because it's a business and that's how a free market works. But the fact that the trains are such a mess, I mean, one of the main reasons, of course, is that today is a Sunday and you've had months of these disputes mm, yes, between the trade unions, the government and the companies, particularly of anti-West Coast. And so it relies on train drivers being willing to do overtime. And so because New Year's Eve has fallen on a Sunday, you've got these massive shortages across the country because their sort of semi-strike action is continuing in refusing to do overtime. I know that ScotRail in Scotland uh, is stopping at 7pm, so if you want to get to Hogmanay, you're going to have a, a tough time. The six do not travel routes on Northern. So, you know, it really is a nightmare. I dare say we talked about the algorithms of airlines. Mm. I think those taxi companies are going to be having a, a fantastic night with the algorithms because you're going to have surge pricing if you're getting one of those. Charlie, but I think in London, you, that lots of the tube lines and um, um, bus services are running all night, aren't they? to get revelers home. They are, and, you know, uh, that's a deal between TfL and um, uh, Department of Transport to pay, obviously, mm. those drivers you know, a lot of overtime, and their younger drivers tend to be, if you have a look out, you know, that will do those those jobs. So I don't know why we don't have this... Well, why we always have this situation every year where... And it does tend to be the unions that are always yes. using these set-piece periods of, you know, time of, of cheer and joy for the rest of us. They're using that as, uh, against the public uh, to, to try and um, uh, squeeze the, the, the public purse even, even more. Yeah. I mean, I'm all for paying people that work there time absolutely but it's the unions that will always try and call the call on these strikes at times when we we need transport the most but I have to say just in, in response to, to Simon as well I once was going back to Brussels for New Year I decided I'd go because I was, I was working out there at the time what a and, terrible idea and I couldn't I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't they sent me back <laughs> they, 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 asked, they voted for me to leave <laughs> but, but I couldn't get back into, so I ended up getting a bus and it was a seven hour bus um, oh which cost Lord. about 40 quid at the last oh minute gosh. because the trains were sort of, yeah, so, yeah. So it, I, I looked the night before because I could see all the trains were cancelled so it was a 6am bus so you would have had to have left now, basically. Or well, this is the actually. problem, isn't it? I mean, the advice is if you're trying to get somewhere, leave now. Make yeah. sure you get there on time. Thank you very much. Oh, I'm um, off. Uh, not now, not literally now. Oh. <laughs> Neither of you. Right, OK. Um, do not move. Um, we're moving on now. Um, American bully XL dogs in England and Wales must now be kept on a lead and muzzled in public. Breeding, selling, or abandoning American bully XL dogs is also illegal. But is it down to the dog or the owner? This is the age-old question, is it with dangerous dogs? Uh, joining us to help break down the new rules is dog trainer Rob Lane. Rob, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, so what the, the new rules coming to force today, can you just explain briefly what they mean if you are an owner of an um, uh, XL bully? So what it'll mean now is it'll mean you'll have to register it to say that you own an XL bully, you'll have to have it microchipped, you'll have to have third party insurance, and you'll have to keep it on a lead and muzzle in any public place, which will include, for example, in your car. Uh, your car, for the purposes of this act, is seen as a public place. So you could be um, charged just for having it in the car without a lead on. That's amazing. I mean, it's not like the police have got a lot to do in any case, is it? But the, 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 the age old question with dangerous dogs is. Is it the owner? Is it bad owners or is it bad dogs? Well, um, there's always been that adage, there are no bad dogs, only bad owners. And I I've, I've personally never thought that to be quite true. There are some dogs, like some people, that are just kind of born bad. Usually it's down to very poor genetics. And certainly we've seen this in the XL Bully. There are some bloodlines that are worse than others. And you see some dogs that I've seen as puppies that you straight away think, at four or five months old, there's something not right with that mm. dog. And there is a, a genetic predisposition within some bloodlines. Um, and, of course, the dog you're showing there looks terrifying. But that if does, you look yeah. at that dog, mm. somebody's cropped its ears. And again, in this one, somebody's cut its ears off to make it look more hostile. And so, of course, the perception is this dog is more dangerous because somebody's tried to make it look dangerous. And, in fact, that dog may have a wonderful temperament. 
But what I've seen is an awful lot of XL bullies who have fantastic temperaments, as most bull breeds do. But if you're the sort of person who wants to take a dog and make it dangerous, well, then you can do that, just as you can with any dog. Mm -hmm. You can take any dog, bring it up badly, and it will become a badly behaved dog. And so my argument has always been, like with every other law, what we should do is punish the actual offender, which is the owner, Mm -hmm. not the dog. If I stab you, we don't punish the knife. We punish me because I'm the one who was in control of it. And I think the same should be true with these dogs. If we look at almost every case where somebody's been killed by one, it's one where the owner wasn't present. The dog has escaped. He's got out. Mm. If yeah, we, we can start see some... them on the that's not going to change. If you see here again in this video, which many of us have seen, mm. where's the owner? It's a loose dog. That's not the dog's fault. The mm. owner allowed that dog to be at large. And that's what we see time and time and time again with these dogs. It's some irresponsible person that allowed the, the dog to be at large. We should be punishing the owner, not the dog. So, Rob, if you if you are the owner of an Exor bully, you can register it and get an, um, and have it added to the index of exempting dogs. I understand. Right, yeah. Okay. Um, of course, by doing that, what's going to happen? And I've had several people contact me who are registering their dogs, even though they genuinely believe it not to be an XL bully, simply because it looks like one, um, and they're worried that if they don't register it and they get stopped by the police they could end up losing their dog, going to court, et cetera. So uh, just a friend of mine just recently, a couple of days ago, contacted me. Her mm-hmm. dog is a Mastiff Staffordshire Bull Terrier Cross. She bought it as one. She saw the owners. She saw the, the parents when the dog was born. But it looks like an XL bully. So what she's did... in this dilemma. Do I not register it and run the risk of getting prosecuted? Mm. Do I register it even though I know it isn't one? Um, and then I have to keep my dog on the lead the rest of its life. This is the problem, isn't it? And we, we're now tasking our um, police officers who, you know, barely have time to do with burglaries and, and, and other serious crime with identifying what is actually an XL bully. Well, what will happen, I suspect, is nothing really will get done. If we look at the Dangerous Dogs Act, it's been around since 1990, and it's estimated 33 years later there are more pit bull terriers in this country than there were when the act came in. It failed on every level, spectacularly. Mm. Mm. And this will be no different. There are even less resources available now than there were then. And I, you know, if I go down to London now, I will see pit bull terriers walking around the streets. Um, But the vast majority of people are responsible with them. And I don't think the police or any other agency want to put down perfectly fit, healthy dogs if Mm. an owner is being responsible with it. Mm. So I think it's even less likely to happen in 2023. 33 years later, we see it hasn't even worked with one breed. Why do we think it's going to be any more effective? You've got lots of vets who are coming forward, rightly so, saying, look, we were bullied into putting to sleep a lot of healthy, innocent dogs in 1990. We're not prepared to do it again. Right. So we say that these dogs will get put to sleep, but who's going to do that? The vets don't want to do it. The Mm. rescues obviously don't want to do it. You don't become a rescuer to kill innocent dogs. So in reality, what's going to happen with these dogs? I think it's an absolute travesty. It really is. You know, Rob, I thought we have to leave it there. Growing up in London, I witnessed this kind of discrimination all the time as a child, simply being the wrong colour. And you'd (laughs) like to think 50 years later, things should have moved on. But here Mm. we are now killing a dog just because of how it looks. I think it's disgusting, really. Rob, just final quick, if someone is listening to us now, watching us now, and they they own a, a perfectly well-behaved uh, um, XL bully, but they're not quite sure what to do, just a quick bit of advice what they should do now with their dog. So there are lots of places, if you look on social media, particularly on Facebook, there are lots of dog trainers and so on who are offering facilities to help you train your dog in private fields that they're renting so you can go there you can take your dog there know that you're not going to be collared by anybody else and you can learn how to control that dog safely and certainly there are lots of people offering that if you're not sure where to go by all means you can contact me um, either through my website or by email robalanaaol.com and i can put you in touch with some people who will help you there are lots and lots the vast majority of owners are very responsible and just want to don't know what to do next you don't have to put your dog to sleep as you've already mentioned you can have it exempted, which may mean that you have to keep it on a lead and muzzle when you're out, but at least you still get to keep your dog. You don't have to put your dog to sleep. Lots Rob, that's really good advice. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's Rob Elaine, dog trainer there, and a very happy new year to you and yours as well. Thank, Thank you for joining you. us. You. Uh, Benjamin and Charlie, I mean, we've heard horrible stories about um, people, you know, dumping dogs. It's just incredibly sad that people feel that pressurised by that. 
Yeah, I think that's one of the, um, uh, the big sadnesses about this whole story. You know, we are a nation of animal lovers, mm. we are a nation of dog lovers, and so the fact that people feel that pressure to either ditch their current dog because they're not quite sure whether rules and, rules and regulations are going to, to land, whether they're affected or not, um, but that was a fascinating interview, and it's absolutely right. You know, it's down to the responsible, you know, us as responsible dog owners. Yeah, I'm not sure. a dog owner, but you know, it is individuals that yeah. have to look after their dogs because it shouldn't be a job for the police to do. People want police. I was going to say the police can't tackle, tackle burglars and assault. I mean, exactly. how are they meant to identify what an XL bully is? Yeah, precisely. And, and that's the thing because you know the XL bully is a very recent breed. It's you know several others combined in in quite recent history, and so there are a lot of other dogs which look very similar to XL bullies. It's difficult for experts to be sure exactly which dog is an XL bully and which isn't because of their similarities. Mm. And I think one of the reasons that a ban would fail as legislation is because people... It doesn't look at the human reasons, as he outlined, as Rob outlined, which is that they're getting these dogs as status symbols. That's why they want yes, them to be aggressive yeah, in yeah. some cases. So you can ban this breed of dog, which is slightly difficult to identify in the first place, but you won't be stopping those people that want status symbols. There's a reason they have an XL bully, not a poodle, and you're not solving that problem yeah, by banning one that's type. That's the thing, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. But many people are responsible owners. But please, listen to Rob's advice and don't panic. There are things you can do. Uh, go to his website and check out what advice he will give you. Um, you're watching and listening to GB News Sunday with me, Dawn Neeson. Coming up, it's um, Mystic Veg with all of her predictions of what the new year will bring you. But first, let's check out what the weather's doing, shall we? Good morning. Welcome to your latest GB News weather forecast. I'm Craig Snell. Well, as we go through New Year's Eve, for most of us, it's going to be a mixture of bright spells and scattered showers. So it's not quite the case for the far north of Scotland here. It's actually going to be quite a wet and windy end to 2023. But uh, elsewhere, there will be some sunshine, as I mentioned, but also a scattering of showers initially across the west, but they will spread their way eastwards as we go through the course of the day. Some of these will be quite heavy. Could even hear the odd rumble of thunder. Quite blustery too across the south coast and with winds coming in from the northwest a little bit of a cooler day compared to yesterday but temperatures still doing fairly reasonably could see highs reaching about 9 to 10 degrees across the south. Then as we head towards midnight for most of us it's going to continue with a risk of some showers so have a rain jacket handy. For Scotland it might well turn a little bit dry here as we go past midnight but that may allow it to turn fairly chilly. Elsewhere temperatures not falling much lower than about 5 to 7 degrees in the southern half of the UK. So for New Year's Day itself for the northern half of the UK, we continued that showery theme, a mixture of some bright spells and some showers. But for the southern half, actually, it will turn drier and brighter for a time. So a brief respite from the unsettled weather here. But uh, it's not going to last for too long, especially down towards the very far southwest of the UK. Some cloud and some rain will return later on in the day. Good afternoon, 12.32. This is the latest from the GB Newsroom. Look forward to 2024 with pride and optimism. That's the message from the Prime Minister as Britain prepares to celebrate the new year. Rishi Sunak promised a brighter future in his New Year's message with tax cuts and a reduction in national insurance. He described 2023 as a momentous year, which saw inflation halved and record investment in the NHS. That's despite junior doctors in England planning their longest walkout in NHS history next month. Boris Johnson's former chief adviser says Rishi Sunak tried to strike what he called a secret deal in a bid to win the next election. Dominic Cummings told the Sunday Times that he was prepared to help the Tories win if he was assured the most critical issues were prioritised. That reportedly includes nuclear weapons infrastructure, future pandemics and artificial intelligence. The proposal was apparently rejected by the Prime Minister. Number 10 did not deny the report, but says Mr Cummings was not offered a position. Loudspeakers and tourist groups are to be banned in Venice as the Italian city looks to clamp down on rowdy visitors. From June, groups larger than 25 people will be blocked from gathering in public areas. The city is also cracking down on the use of noisy speakers amid complaints from locals they cause confusion and disturbance. It follows the introduction of a £4.30 entry fee for tourists in September. Venice is one of the Europe's most popular destinations, but residents have complained that too many visitors are ruining the city's character. Yeah! <laughs> 
And the new year has arrived in Auckland as New Zealand's biggest city welcomed 2024 with a spectacular fireworks display. The Sky Tower was alight in sparks and colours as the country became one of the first to chime in the new year. Though it was beaten by the Pacific nation of Kiribati, which entered 2024 at 10 o'clock this morning. You can get more on all of those stories by visiting our website, gbnews.com. Now back to Dawn. Uh, lots more coming up on today's show. Uh, we'll be getting some mystic predictions of 2024. Yes, I can't wait. Uh, will we get a Labour government? Will Trump get into power? And a lady who, wait for it, uses asparagus to predict the future. We'll unveil all very soon. All of that and much more coming up. Don't go anywhere. I'm Dawn Neesman. You're watching and listening to GB News, Britain's news channel. Join us every night on GB News at 11pm for Headliners, which is three top comedians going through the next day's news stories, which is exactly what you need, because when the establishment has gone crazy, you need some craziness to make sense of it. Headliners. You don't have to bother reading the newspaper. We've got it covered for you. Every night at 11pm and repeated every morning at 5am. We won't send you to sleep like some of the other paper review shows out there. So join us 11pm every night on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's news channel. I think the most exciting bit for me is talking to people. People who I think are ignored often by the major news channels, we're going to give news they want to hear. There's a voice there that needs to be heard. I think there's a chance here for a diversity of opinion to be expressed, which you don't find elsewhere. It's really exciting. We don't hold back. We're free to say how decisions that are taken here affect us all around the country. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Michelle Jubery, and I'm not here to tell you what to think. I'd much rather hear what you have to say. So, send in your opinions to gbviews at gbnews.com. Keep them clean, and you never know, I might read them out. With my panel here on Jubes & Co, we debate, we get stuck into the issues of the day on a show where all views are welcome, especially yours. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. In the GB Newsroom, we bring you the news as it happens with our team of dedicated journalists across the UK. We're ready to give you accurate reporting every day. When the news breaks, we'll be there with bulletins on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Your weekend starts here with Friday Night Live with me, Mark Dolan, 8 till 9 on GB News. Big stories, big guests and big laughs as we get you ready for a cracking weekend. That's Friday Night Live with Mark Dolan. Fridays 8 till 9 on GB News. Bring your own drinks. The admission's free. Good afternoon, Britain. Good afternoon, Britain. Join us, Tom and Emily, to find out what's happening in the heart of Westminster and why it matters to you. Weekdays from midday, we bring you the most compelling stories from across the United Kingdom. And from your doorstep to our inbox. That's right, we want to hear from you. GB News. Britain's news channel. Big news, big debates, big opinion. Patrick Christie's Tonight is the week's biggest show. Every weekday, 9 to 11 p.m., we've got the inside track on the day's top stories. There'll be sharp takes you won't get anywhere else. We will set the news agenda, not just follow it, and I want to bring you along for the ride. Whatever it is, we'll have our finger on the pulse. It's news, but it's this close to entertainment. Patrick Christie's Tonight, 9 to 11 p.m., only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. GB News is Britain's news channel, and now you can support it. All you have to do is scan that QR code that's up on your screen right now, or you can go to gbnews.com forward slash support and become a GB News member. You'll have fantastic benefits. We're also going to organise special events where you as GB News members can meet the presenters, the on-screen faces, scan the QR code or go to gbnews.com slash support. Thank you so much. Welcome back uh, to GB News Sunday and Happy New Year's Eve. I'm Dawn Neeson on your TV, online and on digital radio. 
Now, 2024 is set to be a big year. We've got a general election on the horizon. No one knows quite when it is, but that's going to shake things up, isn't it? And across the Atlantic, they'll be deciding if Donald Trump returns to the White House, which will likely shape the global political landscape. What kind of shape? No one's sure. Kind of like a blob, I'm imagining. Um, with all this on the table, it's easy to feel uncertain about what's coming up next. But don't worry, we've got the answers you need. Mystic Veg is here, armed with her mystical asparagus, ready to give us some insights into what is going on in 2024. Uh, Jemima Packington, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you are Mystic Veg. And there's the veg. Spanamancer. Right. OK, so uh, how did this come about? What, what, what do you do exactly? What I do is I take some asparagus and then I cast it onto a flat surface. And then from the patterns it makes, ah. I'm able to make predictions. Right. So it's like reading the runes type thing, but with asparagus. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And, and how did you discover that asparagus worked to predict things? Oh, eons ago when I was a small girl. Right. And I think it's, it's a very earthy vegetable and uh, it grows um, so quickly, it's strong and it seems to work for me. Right, OK. Does it work with any other vegetables? Oh, we've tried it. Broccoli is no good. Right, OK. okay. That would, that would uh, be my obvious one, obviously, because they're quite similar, aren't they? Cauliflower, carrots, no, it just doesn't work. But no. asparagus. Right, asparagus. OK, um, so uh, what are your big predictions for 2024, you and your asparagus? Right, deaths of world leaders. Oh. But the US will have a female president. Oh, wow. Right, OK. Kamala Harris. Oh, that's interesting. Mm. And, and what shape did the asparagus land in to predict that? It's, it's very difficult um, to explain. There are certain things connected, for instance, with royal family. You see a crown. And if there is a breakup, like, like I, I predicted this year, um, separations and divorces within royal family, the, the spears break. or right. they, um, and, and you're able to interpret from that. Right. I say Kamala Harris is going to be um, the, the next president of the US, then? No, she's not going to be. Right. But the next president will be female. Oh, right, will be female. Right, OK. Um, and what about over here, our politics, which is just as mad as America at the moment, aren't they? Um, we have a general election at some point coming up. Um, what? Who's going to win that one? Uh, well, I will tell you now that the, the asparagus has said that Keir Starmer will not lead the Labour Party into the next election. Keir Starmer won't? He won't. Oh, why? What's going to happen to him? Well, there's regime change throughout the world. People are getting a bit sick and tired and they're looking at their leaders and they're not very happy. Um, so, you know, it, the people will speak and things are going to change at the top. Right. So who's going to take over? I mean, I mean, maybe the maybe the asparagus wasn't um, that accurate, but I mean, on this on who was actually going to take over? I mean, Angela Rayner, maybe didn't even get that far, just uh. knew it would be him. Right, OK. And what about, the, what about the royal families? Any predictions for the royal family this year? Just watch out for news from Montecito. There are going to be separations and divorces within the royal family. Remember, it is extended, um, but there's going to be quite some news from Montecito. Right. So it could be a Harry and Meghan split? Uh, that, that looks on the cards. Oh, Controversial. OK, um, I think we, we have to leave it. Do, do you remember, what are you, what are you and the asparagus doing for New Year yourself? Right, so this is going to get cooked with some chicken and we're going to enjoy that for our lunch. Right. I just it... wanted to try. I brought that out of the kitchen just specially for you. Right. And as far as we're concerned, we're just going to have a nice quiet evening and then watch the future unfold. Right. Excellent. Yes. Well, I think it's a bit of a harsh way to treat your asparagus, but it's been so helpful here. Um, thank you so much for joining us uh, this afternoon. Well, Jemima Packington. Um, OK, Mystic Veg, and very, very happy New Year to you and the soon-to-be-deceased asparagus. Yes. OK, Charlie, what do you make of that? I mean, I, I, at what point in life do you think, right, OK, let's see if, um, if a vegetable can tell the future? <laughs> 
Well, it, uh, she's about to cook that asparagus. I bet it didn't see that coming, did it? Oh, exactly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> didn't predict it'll be her dinner yes. later on. Yes. Um, although, I'd, yes, yeah, well, I'm sure asparagus is lovely, but, um, I, you know, uh, each to their own. I would have loved to have asked her, Dawn, I know you would have liked to know this question as so well, who's going to win the Premier League this year? Because I was at the Arsenal. I'm an Arsenal fan. I know you were a uh, Hammers fan, and congratulations the other night. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, the, I was well deserved, uh, actually. So you were dreadful. We weren't great. Yeah. We weren't great. But as an Arsenal fan, I'm keen, obviously, to see. Uh, uh, North London retain that trophy again, the red side of North London retain that trophy, so I would have liked to... Uh, see, right, we but, could have but, asked her that, yeah, but, but uh, I mean, the asparagus obviously had a, a, I wouldn't, I wouldn't a meeting pinned, with a hot pan. Yeah, I wouldn't have pinned all my hopes on well, that prediction no. from Mr Veg, but uh, there yeah. she is. What would you like to have asked? <laughs> <laughs> Careful. I, um, Keep it clean. I, I don't want to libel her, but I... Uh, <laughs> I, I, I mean, look, she says it's going to be a bad year for North London Reds if she thinks Keir Starmer isn't going to be Labour leader. Um, I mean, look, I think it's, uh, what's the word, insane. I don't think it makes any sense at all. But, uh, you know, it's How entertaining. How dare you? It makes perfect sense to me. <laughs> yes. I'm going to go home and try it with some carrots. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to try it with my champagne bottles, see what they produce. Yes. Yeah, you are um... obsessed today, aren't you, by the champagne side of things? Remember to have a flat surface. Yes. Though, you must have a flat surface. <laughs> and, then, and then if the champagne bottle breaks, that means <laughs> yeah. there's bad news in Yeah, that means you're probably on a yeah. fast trip to A&E. Um, right, well, that would... God yes. bless her. Yes, no, I, thought that, I thought the Harry and Meghan thing was interesting, though. Well, yes, mm. all eyes appealed in mm. Montecito. I mean, look, I, you know, the only two people that could be a female US president, plausibly, mm. are Kamala Harris, the VP yeah. candidate for the Democrats, or mm. Nikki Haley, mm. the former yeah. UN uh, uh, ambassador, who is now in second place for the GOP, the mm. Republican nomination, but she's also 50 points behind Donald Trump. Now, if she had said Kamala Harris could end up because Joe Biden's not got long left, God forbid, mm. uh, that might have been plausible. But I think I think I might take her predictions more seriously if, if they sort of aligned with political reality a bit more. Right, OK, well, we, we have to leave the asparagus there. Good luck with the asparagus at home, by the way. Give it a try with some peas, maybe. Uh, you're watching and listening to GB News on New Year's Eve with me, Dawn Neeson. Lots more coming up on today's show. We'll be going after Sydney to get their fireworks. They do better than us. And expect to see Sydney Harbour Bridge lit up as we join them in the countdown to 2024. Twenty twenty four, a battleground year. The year the nation decides. As the parties gear up their campaigns for the next general election. Who will be left standing when the British people make one of the biggest decisions of their lives? Who will rise and who will fall? Let's find out together. For every moment, the highs, the lows, the twists and turns. We'll be with you for every step of this journey. In twenty twenty four, GB News is Britain's election channel. GB News, unlike other broadcasters, isn't obsessed with the London Westminster bubble. We think there's a nation beyond the M25, and that's why we talk about the issues that matter across the land. Join me on State of the Nation, 8 to 9 o'clock, Monday to Thursday, on GB News. Daisy's listening, and you should too. Wake up to the headlines with Headliners every morning at 5 a.m. We treat you to the day's biggest stories before anyone else, seven days a week. You can catch up on everything you need to know before you've even had your kippers. Mmm. Headliners every morning at 5 a.m. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Andrew Doyle. Join me at 7 o'clock every Sunday night for Free Speech Nation, the show where I tackle the week's biggest stories in politics and current affairs with the help of my two comedian panellists and a variety of special guests. Free Speech Nation, Sunday nights from 7 on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Now then, Lee Anderson here. Join me on GB News on my show, The Real World, every Friday at 7 p.m. I'm not eating bloody cat. Are you Delicious. mental? Open your mouth. OK, here comes a, <laughs> here comes a train. It reminds me of the scene in Singing in the Rain. Adam, is that a good one? <laughs> oh, whoa! Join me at 7 on GB News, Britain's news channel. What you get for breakfast is something that, if we do our jobs right, you will wake up to news that you didn't know the night before. It's a conversation. It's not just me and Eamon. We want to get to know you, and we want you to get to know us. From 6, it's Breakfast with Eamon and Isabel. Monday to Thursdays on GB News. Britain's News Channel. Have a great Saturday night with me, Leo Curse, on this Saturday Night Showdown. It's a crazy world out there, so come and make fun of it with me, my panel of comedians, and a couple of people who actually know what they're talking about. This Saturday Night Showdown is your front row ticket to the clown show. Every Saturday, only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel.
Good afternoon, Britain. Good afternoon, Britain. Join us, Tom and Emily, to find out what's happening in the heart of Westminster and why it matters to you. Weekdays from midday, we bring you the most compelling stories from across the United Kingdom. And from your doorstep to our inbox. That's right, we want to hear from you. GB News, Britain's news channel. Every Sunday from 11, join Michael Portillo. There will be topical discussion, looking at the week before and the week to come. So kick back and relax at 11am on Sundays on GB News with me, Michael Portillo. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. When the news happens, it happens here. And really important breaking news. Breaking news this morning. On TV, radio and online, the news starts here on Britain's Newsroom. All the biggest stories and the answers that you need from across the UK and beyond. Join Britain's Newsroom from 9.30 on GB News. The People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Welcome back. I hope your asparagus is safe and sound. Now, joining me in the studio to go through all the biggest sports and showbiz stories is sports broadcaster Ada McGee and entertainment reporter Hayley Palmer, both looking absolutely stunning. One slightly more stunning than the other. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Uh, <laughs> I knew you'd do that as well. <laughs> right, uh, Hayley, we're going to start with you because how we can ignore you, looking gorgeous. Um, hmm. So, what are the highlights? What can we look forward to? What's What's... Big for 2024. Okay, Gladiators is coming back. I loved that as a kid. Me too. I actually went to the Birmingham NEC to watch it. Oh, yeah, wasn't he your next door neighbour? Yeah, no, he was wasn't. No, his brother, who's a journalist for Press Association, was my lodger for a while. There we go. Claims to fame. Mm -hmm. Link, weird. Well, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yep. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. it's coming back, which I think is exciting news. Now, they are bringing back some of the iconic. <laughs> Uh, different games, so you're going to have the Eliminator. Right, the big that is... cotton bud, remember? Yeah. Cotton buds. Everyone yeah. remembers cotton buds, don't they? <laughs> no, I want to do... Is it the Travelator? Sure. What's the one we yeah, used to Travelator, run off yeah, it? Yeah, 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 that's good. You're sitting at home eating your fish and chips and you're like, I could see that. Yeah, yeah no, I used to do that every week. Delivery now, I suppose, <laughs> wouldn't it? Yeah, so um, it's coming back and Bradley Walsh is the host with his son, so I think we should give it a go because I feel like it's what we need. And when does that start? Is that uh, that starts January? in January, yeah. It's been for a while, isn't it? Okay. Hello? It's been in the offing for a while. We, yes. had Wolf, we had Wolf on the show. We did have a few gladiators here, yeah. didn't yeah, we? Yeah, but yeah. 2024 is yeah. where it's at. That's what I don't want to sit next to a gladiator at this stage of, you know... <laughs> that, oh, yeah. you're super fit! Oh, oh, I, I did give you a monster energy drink earlier, yeah, didn't thank I? Thank you very much. That was lovely. <laughs> and I need it today. Um, so let's talk about the proper sport. What's going on there? Well, look, I think we should focus on Luke Littler. He's the 16-year-old now, last night, who at the World Championship dance at Ali Pali. He blew away the five-time champion, Raymond Van Barneveld. He's captured the attention of the nation. He's got through to the quarterfinal now. That means he's already scooped £50,000. He's up against Brendan Dolan from Northern Ireland next time. What a performance, though, Dawn. I thought against Van Barneveld, he might struggle in that televisual environment, the big crowd in front of a big audience. And by the way, here's a bit of trivia for you. Why is there no air conditioning allowed in the Darts World Championship at the Ali Pali? Um, I, go, on. I go on. If you don't know, it's fine. I can tell you. I'm here. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, that's right. what we're here, that's what we're here affects, to do. We pay you for that. Because it affects, <laughs> affects the flight of the darts. It's that sensitive. Absolutely. Really? Yeah, yeah it is. So you can actually. Yeah, the, the top prize is £500,000. Imagine walking away with that at 16. Oh, I think he can do it now. But let's keep an eye on him. He'd be brilliant. And it's 16. 16. And wow. six. the, 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 Barnival, the Van Barneveld last night was 40 years older than him, old enough to be his grandfather. Wow. So what happens now? What stage are we at with the darts? We're at the quarter finals. About the darts, yeah, quarter finals. Yeah, look, it's been growing in, in stature for a number of years now. I was covering it 20 years ago, and you're begging papers to take six paragraphs. And so now it's just a big, big event. Miss Sky have helped with that. So have uh, other entities who are involved in it, big sponsorship, etc. Paddy Power, etc. So that, that's made a big difference. But Luke Litter is the what, 16 years old. I can't think, apart from maybe Emma Raducanu, I can't think of a bigger breakthrough act in sport in the last 20 years. So he's going to go on and on Let's and on so. and going to be absolutely brilliant. It'll be fun. He's got I'm really some good at darts, actually. Are you? Yeah, I'm really good at darts. Are you? Yeah, surprisingly. I used to have a dartboard in my bedroom as a kid, really? which is a bit random now, but yeah, I'm still His not very good at it. His face was on it. it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still not very good at it, I must admit. And is there football today It's a tough thing. Well? Uh, no, there's, uh, there was a big, big programme of football yesterday. Man United lost uh, yesterday 2-1, having turned things around against Aston Villa. West Ham in action Tuesday, is that right? Yeah, we're in action on Tuesday. Oh, keep you, keep you out tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. But um, if you are going to any sporting events, um, you might need to find out what's happening with the weather. Um, I'm not holding my breath on this one. I think it's going to be a bit wet and windy if you're going out tonight or going to any sport this week. You weekend. can walk to West Ham, can't you, Dawn? Yeah, yeah, I can walk, yeah, but lots of people can't. Lots yeah, I know, I know. I know. And that's yeah. difficult as well. Anyway, so let's have a look at what the weather's doing, shall we? 
A brighter outlook with Box Solar. Sponsors of weather on GB News. Good morning. Welcome to your latest GB News weather forecast. I'm Craig Snell. Well, as we go through New Year's Eve, for most of us, it's going to be a mixture of bright spells and scattered showers. So it's not quite the case for the far north of Scotland here. It's actually going to be quite a wet and windy end to 2023. But uh, elsewhere, there will be some sunshine, as I mentioned, but also a scattering of showers initially across the west, but they will spread their way eastwards as we go through the course of the day. Some of these will be quite heavy. Could even hear the odd rumble of thunder. Quite blustery too across the the south coast and with winds coming in from the northwest a little bit of a cooler day compared to yesterday but temperatures still doing fairly reasonably could see highs reaching about 9 to 10 degrees across the south. Then as we head towards midnight for most of us it's going to continue with a risk of some showers so have a rain jacket handy. For Scotland it might well turn a little bit dry here as we go past midnight but that may allow it to turn fairly chilly. Elsewhere temperatures not falling much lower than about five to seven degrees in the southern half of the UK. So for New Year's Day itself for the northern half of the UK, we continue that showery theme, a mixture of some bright spells and some showers. But for the southern half, actually, it will turn drier and brighter for a time. So a brief respite from the unsettled weather here. But uh, it's not going to last for too long, especially down towards the very far southwest of the UK. Some cloud and some rain will return later on in the day. Looks like things are heating up. Boxed boilers. Sponsors of weather on GB News. Your weekend starts here with Friday Night Live with me, Mark Dolan, 8 till 9 on GB News. Big stories, big guests and big laughs as we get you ready for a cracking weekend. That's Friday Night Live with Mark Dolan, Fridays 8 till 9 on GB News. Bring your own drinks, the admission's free. In the GB Newsroom, we bring you the news as it happens. With our team of dedicated journalists across the UK, we're ready to give you accurate reporting every day. When the news breaks, we'll be there with bulletins on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Big news, big debates, big opinion. Patrick Christie's tonight is the week's biggest show. Every weekday, 9 to 11 p.m., we've got the inside track on the day's top stories. There'll be sharp takes you won't get anywhere else. We will set the news agenda, not just follow it, and I want to bring you along for the ride. Whatever it is, we'll have our finger on the pulse. It's news, but it's this close to entertainment. Patrick Christie's tonight, 9 to 11 p.m., only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. Join us every night on GB News at 11pm for Headliners, which is three top comedians going through the next day's news stories. Which is exactly what you need, because when the establishment has gone crazy, you need some craziness to make sense of it. Headliners. You don't have to bother reading the newspaper. We've got it covered for you. Every night at 11pm and repeated every morning at 5am. We won't send you to sleep like some of the other paper review shows out there. So join us 11pm every night on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's news channel. I'm Michelle Jubery, and I'm not here to tell you what to think. I'd much rather hear what you have to say. So, send in your opinions to gbviews at gbnews.com. Keep them clean, and you never know, I might read them out. With my panel here on Jubes & Co, we debate, we get stuck into the issues of the day on a show where all views are welcome, especially yours. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Tired of the usual focus tested pre prepared Westminster runaround? Well, so am I. So you want higher taxes? Is your department to blame for this? Are you rethinking this policy? Every Sunday at 9 30, I'll be sitting down with those in power to get the truth about the issues affecting you. Let's be honest, we've known about the cost pressures of this project for years, not months. That's the Camilla Tomini Show, a politics show with personality. On GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. I think the most exciting bit for me is talking to people. People who I think are ignored often by the major news channels, we're going to give news they want to hear. There's a voice there that needs to be heard. I think there's a chance here for a diversity of opinion to be expressed, which you don't find elsewhere. It's really exciting. We don't hold back. We're free to say how decisions that are taken here affect us all around the country. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. 
Good afternoon, Britain. Good afternoon, Britain. Join us, Tom and Emily, to find out what's happening in the heart of Westminster and why it matters to you. Weekdays from midday, we bring you the most compelling stories from across the United Kingdom. And from your doorstep to our inbox. That's right, we want to hear from you. GB News, Britain's news channel. Welcome back. It's uh, Happy New Year's Eve and it's nearly midnight in Australia and we're about to join them in their countdown to 2024. Right, OK, I've still got Hayley and Aidan with me to watch the fireworks and it's, the, it's about to happen and the bridge has gone dark and the countdown is... Right, 45 seconds to go. It's exciting, isn't it? You can see oh, the wow. countdown, bottom left, you see? Yeah, not that well, actually. It's a bit, uh, yeah. yeah. So, but I've, I've never been to Australia. It's on my bucket list to do. And, oh, uh, been, I've you? been to Sydney. I've been to Manly. Beautiful. And I really want to go to Melbourne as well. I want to be in home and away, actually. And it's such a vast country. <laughs> it is, it's just and it's such a vast country that, that it's it? different time zones. So it's not, it's not New Year all over Australia. No, this, I think... Right, right, we're coming up. Five, 15. four, three, two... No, that's 12. One. No, that's ten. You, you missed off the, the one at the front. We'll get more reaction from our lovely panel after we've seen all the fireworks.
Wow, that that was pretty spectacular. I think that was what 15 minutes of fireworks we saw there. Mm. It was extraordinary. I mean, it must have cost a fortune. It, I, well, yeah, I mean, trust you to go straight in on the money aspect. There. But I mean, to, you know, I mean, the Australians have done it. If you're going to do New Year, if you're going to have fireworks, then do it. Yeah, I mean, it went on so long that I, I think they said the, the caption says welcoming in 2024. I think it might be 2025 by the time. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't that long. At least they did it. Come on. Do you know what? It's such a fabulous advertisement for Sydney. Both mm. Charlie and I were watching it and thinking about, oh, I really want to go to Australia. I really must book that trip. I'd like to go next New Year's Eve. And I think that's why it's probably a, you know, a fantastic advert to the world, not just because they, they get to be one of the first places to welcome in. Well, New Zealand was... I, mean, I was corrected on this earlier on because New Zealand did it at 11 o'clock this morning. I was so confused. Yes. That. I had no idea New Zealand was... It was even, no, me, me neither. That much further That was ahead. 11 o'clock our time this morning. Yeah, but um, we ain't so... watching the, uh, the, the, the fireworks from Wellington, are we? We were watching them from Sydney. Mm. And I thought that was fabulous. Oh, definitely. And I think it, Benjamin's absolutely right. It's an advert to the rest of the world, you know. Yes. It is iconic yes. in the Sydney U New Year firework display. The whole world is watching. Get on a plane, book that ticket, go to Australia. And I think, you know... Uh, they're a proud country. They're very proud. They celebrate themselves, you know, as a, as a nation. We are slightly more, you know, typically British and understated. Well, I mean, we've, we've had firework displays cancelled in here because mm. we can't afford it. Do you know, well, yeah. for two years during the COVID, some of the COVID period, I lived right by Parliament, and so I, and I had a beautiful big terrace, and so I thought, wow, the reason I want this flat is because I can see the fireworks. <laughs> Lo and behold, even in the latter year, which was when COVID rules had been released, you know, relieved, they still cancelled the fireworks. They still so I, I never got my perfect view of the London Wasn't fireworks. Wasn't there one... In case you're wondering who is, is rabbiting on about, you know, living in a very posh flat in Westminster, <laughs> that is uh, Benjamin <laughs> Butterworth and Charlie Rowley, who are back with me now talking <laughs> about uh, the, the impressive fireworks we've just seen in Sydney. 15 minutes worth of them. And I said, you know, I think we had lasers once, didn't we? Didn't, we? didn't Sadiq Khan organise lasers in this uh, in do, London? And you have those drone mm. displays. Yeah, drones, that was it, drones. We've it seen drones. those at the, some of the royal occasions, like the Jubilee Party and the late Queen's uh, and the New King's celebration. And I think that's what really makes it fantastic. I don't think I spotted any of drone displays in that, but I think we should probably expect some of that in the London fireworks tonight, because we've had those for the past couple of occasions yes. that they've done them. Have and you I, ever... Mm. Go on, you're, well, you're going to be somewhere posh watching him, aren't you, Charlie? Well, I, I will. I'll be on the, the House of Commons terrace this evening. I know, I know how the other half we live I know. <laughs> at times. But, um, but I do think we need the drones because, obviously, we can't rely on the brilliant weather that I think Australia have. And I was watching it, that display and I was thinking, who on earth has been able to set all of that up in the hope that it doesn't rain to sort of dampen the whole it's affair? It's Sydney. It, it, it's Sydney. Yeah. Of they're, they're, they can, yeah. In London, obviously, we never know what the weather's yeah. going to be like. So having a balance between fireworks and drones to make sure that the occasion can go off, whatever the weather, I think is probably... I think these fireworks are so spectacular and industrial mm. that they would get through any weather. Yeah, I think they would. But it also, you know, this is one of those occasions that really makes me proud to be British because you have it always covers from, you know, big I've not seen them yet. It's going to be a damn squib, <laughs> won't it? It'll be one sparkler. No, no, because, you know, when it gets to every, every New Year's Eve, we see it with Big Ben and the London Eye. And, you know, much like we're admiring Australia here, you know, I often feel really proud when it gets to midnight and everyone gathers around mm. the telly to watch it. It, and then you do old Lang Syne. It's made me really excited for New Year. Mm. Has it? It has. Do you have a little kiss on New Year, do you, with someone? <laughs> well, I try. Well, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's, it, gets, it gets more difficult every year, darling. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you know, the, 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 the tradition of a New Year's kiss started in our um, ancient Britain, Roman times. Did it? Yes, do you remember? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes, well, I do, actually. Well, we were uh, talking about it just on this very sofa the other day, how someone has auctioned themselves off for £10,000 yes. for a kiss on New Year's Eve. Yes. That was, I mean, That's yeah. That's me offering to pay And that wasn't, for, yeah. that wasn't for charity or anything. You wouldn't get 10 quid, you wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but that wasn't for charity, was quid it? to not. <laughs> yeah. 10p? Right, OK. Um, anyway, so that's enough of us waffling about Sorry. the fireworks. <laughs> Hopefully you're going to go and see some fireworks tonight, but they won't be as good as Sydney. Well, they, they do know how to do it. And, and good for them, actually celebrating in style. Mm. And, and we're going to... Happy New Year. 
yeah. the Australian viewers. Happy New Year to everyone watching and listening in Australia. Right, now we've just seen their spectacular fireworks um, and New Year's celebrations are underway here as well. The countdown is well and truly on. So the attention is turning to how we're all celebrating. You've already heard my panel are doing very, very impressive stuff in London. I'm going to be going home, having a cup of tea and going to bed and having a row about it with the husband, as many of us do, don't we? I mean, it's like one wants to do one, one wants to do another. Uh, right, now, tonight on GB News, though, if you are snuggling up like I am and watching the telly, um, the clock strikes midnight. We'll be broadcasting live from various corners of the country. But before then, we're eager to hear from you. What are you doing to? What Are you, are you going out? Are you staying in? Um, so I just want to know, what, the more unusual your New Year's celebration is, the better, or even if you're being quite boring like me and probably having an early night. But we go from Sydney to Ireland. So let's cross to Kerry, where restauranter uh, Paul Trevord is, I'm sure, very busy. Hello, good morning, good afternoon even. Thank you for joining us. Um, at New Year's Eve gets into full swing over there. So what's happening with you tonight? What are the plans where you are? Well, Dawn, how are you doing? And a happy New Year to you and all the happy New Year. viewers. I was watching those fireworks, and we do something similar like that here in Kerry every Friday night. Slightly bigger and better and a little bit longer, but well done, <laughs> Australia. Uh, well, I tell you, in 21 years that we've been in business in Trevo's in Killarney, we've done the full gala dinner, the black tie, we've done the champagne reception, we've done the a la carte, we've done the smaller menu, we've done all that kind of stuff. And for this year, I've decided for one year only that we're going to give all the guys a night off because the staff are absolutely amazing that work on our team here. So we're going to take the night off. It's a Sunday. It's pretty miserable out there. And we're going to go out. We're going to have dinner. We're going to go out with our friends, our family, and all that kind of stuff. And we're going to have an amazing night. That's, that's what our plan for, for us is. It's a kind of an extra little Christmas bonus to all the team for working so hard this year. That's such a lovely idea because people always sort of underestimate how hard it is in the hospitality industry. I mean, you've just had sort of like Christmas, which is non-stop for you all and so it's such a nice idea to treat the staff yeah i mean look we're blessed when when covid happened i kept the whole team on full pay full everything and in reward i got back on my brother who, who works with me in the restaurant that all the guys stayed on with us incredible loyalty so we said look you know we've got an amazing team we work really really hard killarney is quite possibly the most beautiful place on earth and i say that slightly biased but i actually really do mean it and it's an absolute stunning place so we're flat out seven days a week from pretty much March up until the end of October. And it's great to be able to reward the guys who've worked so hard and turn around and say, do you know what? Go out and enjoy yourselves. Have fun with your friends and your family too. And ring in the new year with the people who mean a lot to you. So that's, that's, that's it, our plan. That's, it's, 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 that's oh, exactly what you should be doing. Do you get customers though, regular customers going, well, I really wanted to come for dinner tonight. What, what are you doing shutting? Yeah, but listen, it's a bit like when a nurse or a doctor gets sick. You kind of go, well, you're there to kind of mind me when I get sick. People forget, you know, we have a life too. Uh, and so we're going to go out and enjoy it. And there's a few people. So what we said to them, listen, most people when they come to Killarney are down for a few days over Christmas and New Year's. So we say, look, we're closed on, 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 the, um, on New Year's Eve night, but come in the night before or come in on the 2nd of January, we're back to open again. Uh, and people are brilliant. They just, they just want a chance. See, I'm very lucky. I have two TV shows on Amazon Prime worldwide. So we have a load of people that come in just to see the restaurant, get the experience of Kerry and see everything. Uh, so we're very, very lucky. If we say, you know, come in the night before or a couple of nights after, people are delighted to come in. That's brilliant. And you personally will not be hungover tomorrow then, I'm assuming? Well, you know, I was listening to the guy <laughs> and having a kiss. And uh, see, us Irish, we go out with a piece of mistletoe in our back pocket seven nights a week, just to be sure, to be sure. So I'm taking <laughs> my life out tonight. We're going out for dinner. Uh, I think one of my sons is coming out as well, but the other guy's too old and too cool to hang out with mom and dad on New Year's Eve. So we're going to go out. The plan is is just have a, maybe a little drink or a little sherry afterwards and have an early night. But there's a good chance you'll see me at two o'clock on top of the bar with my top off, swinging around to a bit of karaoke and having a great night. We need those pictures. That sounds a great night. As Paul Trevor, uh, thank you very much for joining us um, from <laughs> Kerry in Ireland today. And a very happy new year to you and all your staff. Thank you very much. Now, lots of you have been sending in your emails on New Year's um, and what you're getting up to. Um, Jenny, good afternoon, Jenny. She says, I'm stuck at home for New Year's Eve after all the travel chaos. Luckily, I've got GB News to keep me company. That's a great plan. I love that plan. I'm going to be joining you, not literally on your sofa, obviously on mine, but I'm going to be joining you watching GB News as well. Uh, meanwhile, Alex says, um, my mum is Turkish and she told me a tradition from home was to buy red underwear for women. Where's this one going? It's supposed to welcome a new and fortunate year because red is seen as the colour of good luck and fortune. I quite like that idea, actually. I um, don't think I'm wearing any today, though. Uh, meanwhile, Phyllis says, um, 
Up in Scotland to ensure good luck for the house, the first four inside Midnight Strike should be someone you love. I love that idea, don't you? That's really lovely. Uh, well, look, keep your views coming in. Fascinating to hear what you're doing as well, because, I mean, they, they sound brilliant. And, and any traditions you're celebrating as well. Um, right, but so keep them. It's at gbviews at gbnews.com. You are watching, indeed, and listening to GB News Sunday with me, Dawn Neeson, on New Year's Eve. Lots more coming up on today's show. Um, shortly, I'll be joined by former Minister Anne Widdicombe as we look back and forward to last year and the next coming year in British politics. Don't go too far, though. Put the kettle on. See you soon. GB News is Britain's news channel, and now you can support it. All you have to do is scan that QR code that's up on your screen right now, or you can go to gbnews.com forward slash support and become a GB News member. You'll have fantastic benefits. We're also going to organise special events where you as GB News members can meet the presenters, the on-screen faces, scan the QR code or go to gbnews.com slash support. Thank you so much. Big news, big debates, big opinion. Patrick Christie's Tonight is the week's biggest show. Every weekday, 9 to 11 p.m., we've got the inside track on the day's top stories. There'll be sharp takes you won't get anywhere else. We will set the news agenda, not just follow it, and I want to bring you along for the ride. Whatever it is, we'll have our finger on the pulse. It's news, but it's this close to entertainment. Patrick Christie's Tonight, 9 to 11 p.m., only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. Now then, Lee Anderson here. Join me on GB News on my show, The Real World, every Friday at 7 p.m. I'm not eating bloody cat. Are you Delicious. Mental? Pretty mouth. OK, here comes, a, here comes a train. Reminds me of the scene in Singing in the Rain. Adam, is that a good one? Whoa! Whoa! Join me at 7 on GB News, Britain's news channel. I'm Andrew Doyle. Join me at 7 o'clock every Sunday night for Free Speech Nation, the show where I tackle the week's biggest stories in politics and current affairs with the help of my two comedian panellists and a variety of special guests. Free Speech Nation, Sunday nights from 7 on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. What you get for breakfast is something that, if we do our jobs right, you will wake up to news that you didn't know the night before. It's a conversation. It's not just me and Eamon. We want to get to know you, and we want you to get to know us. From 6, it's Breakfast with Eamon and Isabel. Monday to Thursdays on GB News. Britain's news channel. Wake up to the headlines with Headliners every morning at 5 a.m. We treat you to the day's biggest stories before anyone else, seven days a week. You can catch up on everything you need to know before you've even had your kippers. Mmm. Headliners every morning at 5 a.m. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. Every Sunday from 11, join Michael Portillo. There will be topical discussion, looking at the week before and the week to come. So kick back and relax at 11 a.m. on Sundays on GB News with me, Michael Portillo. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Michelle Jubery, and I'm not here to tell you what to think. I'd much rather hear what you have to say. So, send in your opinions to gbviews at gbnews.com. Keep them clean, and you never know, I might read them out. With my panel here on Jubes & Co, we debate, we get stuck into the issues of the day on a show where all views are welcome, especially yours. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Have a great Saturday night with me, Leo Carson, this Saturday night showdown. It's a crazy world out there, so come and make fun of it with me, my panel of comedians, and a couple of people who actually know what they're talking about. This Saturday night showdown is your front row ticket to the clown show. Every Saturday, only on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Welcome back. Uh, I'm Dawn Neeson. This is a GB News. And I think coming up, we've got a treat for you. Rishi Sunak's good year message, New Year message. Happy New Year, everyone. I hope you had a great Christmas. We can look back on a pretty momentous year. We've delivered record funding for the NHS and social care. Schools in England are surging up the global league tables. We're getting the economy growing. We 
we've cut inflation in half. Sorry about that. The audio was a bit of a problem there. Um, we're going to come back to that as soon as we can. I mean, I'm assuming you've both listened to the political uh, New Year's messages coming from Rishi Sunak and Keir Starmer this morning. What did you make of them, Charlie? Yeah, I think they're interesting. I mean, they're both... Um, uh, the reason why I think people are so turned off in politics at times is because they may not be the best deliveries, uh, deliverers of, you know, uh, uh, down-the-camera sort of messages like this, beaming into your home, is wanting to get across your, uh, your priorities for the next year. But I'm sure they'll be backed up with speeches very early in the new year. But Rishi's is all about reiterating sort of the five priorities that he set out at the start of this Which year. Which is not exactly hitting, is he, really? I mean, all right, inflation, maybe, but... There's, there, there's a lot to do. There's progress, there's progress, as he'll say, but he'll say 2024 is the year basically as the prime minister you know he has halved inflation you know small boats are down by a third those crossings you know there is investment in the nhs taxes will come down we've got the budget in march that was announced just a couple of weeks ago so so he's got a positive message and a positive spin that he'll want to take to the country into 2024 and let's hope it uh, it lands with the voters but the truth is i don't think these messages matter very much at all well i, I don't think in this day and age that we hold our leaders in the esteem that means that when we look at these videos they put out at New Year, that we that we really give much weight to what they say. Often it's quite generic comments. It's kind of trying to get home the message they have in the first place, saying it'll be a good year. But I don't think people really listen to political mm. leaders like maybe they did a generation or two ago. I, I must confess that it wasn't first thing on my mind this morning mm. when I go, oh, God, I wonder what Kira and Rishi are going to say today. Yeah, but... I, th I, think, I think that's so right, because there's been so much politics this year yeah. at a time where people mm. just want to get together with their families, they want to have a good time, Time, they've got New Year coming. The last thing that actually people probably want to do is tune in to whatever political leader they are to hear what but, the message they've got to say. They'll wait till the New Year. Yeah. You know, it's interesting that, uh, that Rishi Sunak does his in Downing Street because he he wants to get every last shot before he's kicked out of Downing Street in the New Year. Oh, so, you're cynic, you know, you're, you're pessimistic. Uh, Did you not hear about the asparagus I, there <laughs> earlier on? I think, Mystic Veg. Well, well, it's very clear. It's true. <laughs> earlier, the, the asparagus said that Keir Starmer won't be leading Labour into the election. Yeah. Well, I say that's quite a leak, isn't it? <laughs> well, oh, that was. Dreadful. <laughs> that was dreadful. Start the car. Shall we, talk to, <laughs> shall we talk to someone who knows what they're talking about with politics, shall we? Uh, joining me now is former Conservative Minister Anne Widdicombe um, to look back at the year and look forward. Anne, lovely to see you. Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Anne, Anne um, but if you could sum up the last year, 2023, this year, in one word politically, what would it be? I know you don't swear, so I'm well, asking that. I think it's been pretty dreadful for both parties. It's, it's been a pretty dreadful year for the world in general. Uh, but here in the UK, uh, I think both parties uh, have failed abysmally, both major parties. And when you look at their New Year messages, the hilarious thing is that they're both saying the same thing. You know, they're going to get on top of the cost of living crisis. They're going to solve the NHS crisis. They're going to solve crime. They're all saying the same thing. Uh, the difference is that Rishi is there and can do things but doesn't. Uh, Keir is there but doesn't know what he wants to do because he changes his mind every five minutes. So it's, um, a, you know, uh, and I agree with what one of your uh, uh, panels said, which is people don't now, you know, hang on the words of politicians, not even prime ministers, uh, in the way that they did say in the time of Churchill or maybe even Matt Millen and certainly Thatcher. Uh, they don't because um, they don't actually expect anything to happen. It doesn't matter what anybody says, what people judge is, what's happening? What's happening to my pay packet? Can mm. I get a doctor when I want one? What is happening, they ask. Politicians never ask that. They just wrote on about what they want to happen. Exactly. And, and obviously, in the run up to an election, and as you know too, so well, it's all promises, promises, but the devil is in the detail. And we're very rarely given the detail of how anything is going to work. Well, exactly. And, uh, you know, I mean, with Keir Starmer, he will give you detail. But then five minutes later, when it's challenged, <laughs> he changes his mind. Uh, uh, and Rishi will give you the detail. And the, the, the obvious response is, well, why haven't you done it then? Uh, and he hasn't got an answer to that. And I think this is the year, 2024, when it is just possible uh, that there could be a break in the mould of British politics and that people do at last find the courage to look away from the two major parties and, and look to uh, smaller parties. Um, now, you know, everybody's talked about it. I, I'm old enough to remember the big alleged sea change when the SDP and the Liberals joined forces and they won a few by-elections, but then that was it. 
Uh, and so it doesn't usually happen. It's got to happen sometime. It could just happen in 2024. If people find the courage to say what we've got isn't working, we're going to change. Well, interesting, Anne, because um, we did a GB News end of year poll and that um, demonstrated that reform is now on 10% of the national vote, which is, is, is bad news for the Tories, certainly. Oh, indeed. And, and there have been several polls now putting uh, reform at 10% and one or two even putting them above, never mind a, a, a GB News poll. Uh, actual, you know, huge polling organisations have got exactly the same result as you've got. Uh, and I think people have got to take notice of that, but have also got to take confidence from it. It can work. It needs courage. I say to people, stop moaning and then doing exactly the same thing again. You know, it's the first sign of madness. <laughs> Go on doing the same thing, voting for the same old parties. You seriously think it's going to get a different result. You won't. But if you vote for reform, you will. So 2024 is the year the British political landscape changes forever. Maybe, maybe. I'm not rash enough to say it will because I know that people like safety. Yes, And exactly. in the end, they tend to go for safety. So I'm not going to make any rash predictions. But if people really want change, this is the year when I think they've got to face up to the fact that they can only get it one way, and that's by voting differently. Brilliant. And thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. And a very, very happy new year to you as well. I hope you have a lovely evening. Uh, that's Anne Whitcomb there with a crystal ball saying that the political system might be changing in the new year. Hmm. Now, let's find out what the news headlines are with Tatiana San Sanchez. Dawn, thank you very much and good afternoon. This is the latest from the GB Newsroom. Look forward to 2024 with pride and optimism. That's the message from the Prime Minister as Britain prepares to celebrate the new year. Rishi Sunak promised a brighter future in his New Year's message with tax cuts and a reduction in national insurance. He described 2023 as a momentous year, which saw inflation halved and record investment in the NHS. That's despite junior doctors in England planning their longest walkout in NHS history next month. Boris Johnson's former chief adviser says Rishi Sunak tried to strike what he called a secret deal in a bid to win the next election. Dominic Cummings told the Sunday Times that he was prepared to help the Tories win if he was assured the most critical issues were prioritised. That reportedly includes nuclear weapons infrastructure, future pandemics and artificial intelligence. The proposal was apparently rejected by the Prime Minister. Number 10 did not deny the report, but says Mr Cummings was not offered a position. And the new year has arrived in Australia as Sydney welcomed 2024 with a spectacular fireworks display. <laughs> The famous Harbour Bridge and Sydney Opera House were alight with colours and sparkle, with the spectacle erupting from landmarks and boats scattered throughout the water. Earlier, the Sky Tower in Auckland, New Zealand, was illuminated in blazing colour as the country became one of the first to chime in the new year. Though it was beaten by the Pacific nation of Kiribati, which entered the new year at 10 o'clock this morning. For more on all of those stories, you can visit our website, gbnews.com. Now back to Dawn. Thank you, Tatiana. Welcome back to GB News Sunday with me, Dawn Neeson, on your TV, online and on digital radio. Now, before the news, we heard from former government minister um, Anne Widdicombe uh, talking about her look back at the year, which wasn't very complimentary, was it? And getting a crystal ball out, looking forward to 2024 politically. Um, Charlie, I mean, you used to be an advisor to Michael Gove. What did you make of what Anne had to say? Yeah, I thought um, I like Anne a lot. I think she's um, talked a lot of sense, as she uh, usually always always does. And stop you know, rolling your eyes, uh, <laughs> Benjamin. <laughs> but it's about um, everybody in politics. It's, it's it's less about telling people what they're going to do. It's about showing people what is going, you know, what they're going to do. So, you know, has inflation come down? Yes, it has. Is the pound being felt in people's pocket? We'll have to see because of the cost of living. You know, do people feel as though the country's uh, working? You know, all of these things is something that the government has to do to articulate to the country that things are getting better. And we've told, we've said what we're going to do, and we've done it. Now, 
When it comes to other parties that Anne was talking about, uh, yes, there has been a drift um, because people are, mm. as they not really switched on, they're looking for alternative parties. So do you have a situation whereby um, uh, you have a set of local elections where you allow people to maybe have a bit of a protest vote and then concentrate the minds of the public to say, look, the choice is going to be very, very clear at the next election. It's either going to be Sir Keir Starmer or Rishi Sunak as the next prime minister. Voting for any other party will just be a wasted vote, or you could let in Sir Keir Starmer through the back door if you're someone in Labour in a, a red wall seat who left the Labour Party because Labour left them, uh, and you're worried about maybe his stance on the EU and, and you know reneging on Brexit. Don't put all that at risk by voting for reform. You must stick with the Tories to finish the job or get the job done. So there'd be a huge communication uh, piece of work that needs to be done by the Tories to make sure that anybody that is in any doubt about the Tories, whether you want to vote for reform or anyone else, that you should stay with the government. Well, well, the latest poll is not good. Labour leader was beating Rishi Sunak in 309 constituents in England, Wales and Scotland on the question of who would make the best Prime Minister. Exactly. And actually, traditionally, that is the question where it's hardest for the leader of the opposition to be ahead because it's, it's very difficult to look like a Prime Minister or a President because you have all the advantages of being in office, like Rishi Sunak's one was done from in Downing Street. That's to make him look Prime Ministerial like he should be there. But we're entering a very important political year. It's it's not just that there is going to be a general election and Rishi Sunak at drinks with uh, various journalists and hacks confirmed that it will be this year. It could have been January 25, but he said this is the general election year. And then in today's Sunday Times, it's reported that they've pencilled in the 14th of November mm. as election day. Now, Emily Thornberry said she thinks it's going to be in May because the May the 2nd is the other date that's been yeah, mentioned. Yeah, the spring yep. budget has been brought forward a little bit to the, I think, 6th of March or something, mm -hmm. early March. Mm. Uh, and and there's suggestions of big tax cuts, like on inheritance tax coming there. But I think you're going to see a fraught year, because while the Tories... I'm not even sure the Tories know when the election are going to be, because they're waiting for economic figures to improve, for inflation to keep coming down, for fewer votes to come in. So I think they're, I think they're sliding doors of exactly when they'll decide. But the fact is that I think you're going to see endless, quite furious, I suspect quite mudslinging political debate in this year. It's not going to be very pleasant, but it will be very entertaining. It's, it is going to be interesting. And uh, the other story I wanted to pick up on um, from the Sunday papers today is Dominic Cummings. Evidently, mm. Rishi Sunak has been having secret, not that secret, it's in the papers, obviously, um, <laughs> meetings with Dominic Cummings over the summer. Yeah. What's going on here, Charlie? Well, they know each other, as you'd expect. I mean, they all worked in, in government together. I mean, there was always a question about how close uh, Don was to Rishi and was that part of the whole plot to bring Boris down? What if do you you're think? A conspiracy you theorist. Um, no, I, look, the, I don't think that there's um, uh, anything uh, going on. I don't think... I think you would be... Uh, it would He'd not be mad, be surely? It would not be wise for the government. If I was there to, 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 to give uh, Dominic Cummings a former role, I think the public uh, would not think that that's the right thing to do and that would be unwise, not illegal, but um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think that would just be something that just wouldn't wouldn't happen. I mean, look, the guy is clearly you know, very intelligent, though, when it comes to things like sort of looking at artificial intelligence, when it looks mm. at things like mm. nuclear power, when it looks at things about national infrastructure. This is something this, that Dom uh, was very, very passionate about, particularly in the Cabinet Office, and trying to reorganise government to make it work, to respond to crises. Do we need him right here, right now in 2024? Do the Tories need him to go and win the general election? I don't think so. Um, I think uh, there is a plenty of talent, plenty of talent already in the Tory party to, to, to see that through. I mean, look, I think Dominic Cummings has had, you know, more comebacks than Madonna at this point. He, he keeps <laughs> fighting another day, so I wouldn't be shocked if it happened. If you look at this rationally, you know, he is... Uh, a genius of political strategy, the way that he navigated mm. the campaign to leave the EU, mm. that he hit upon arguments that resonated with millions of people that had been ignored by some very clever people that you might call sort of establishment figures, totally missed this caveat, you know, this big this chasm in the country. And then he managed to get Boris Johnson into Downing Street with a majority of 80 Huge odd. majority, uh, As we learned the hard way, quite something to make Boris Johnson look pre presentable and competent, but Dominic Cummings was good enough. And the threat he always held over, dare I speak here of a colleague, the threat he always held over <laughs> Boris Johnson was that I just wanted, and he said this explicitly, he said, I just wanted to get Boris 
Lewis in there, and then I wanted him out because he's useless. It was about having the number of MPs to do the agenda. Well, lo and behold, when Dominic Cummings left the Downing Street machine, my God, it fell apart. And so I think if you're Rishi Sunak, nothing has gone right in any serious So you, you actually think it might be a good idea to have him back? I think if I were in Rishi Sunak's uh, shoes, his small shoes, uh, I would be <laughs> requesting... Small but expensive shoes that he wears like to buildings. If I were in his small shoes with his sort of short trousers just above them, uh, I would be saying I want Dominic Cummings back if, 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 I, if I were in his position. I think it's perfectly acceptable to have a conversation with Dom, obviously, because of all the, all the reasons... Yeah, that, no, all, exactly. all, all, all the reasons that Dom said, but, but, but the only What's thing I would conclude... What's he like in person? Because you've been inside that machine. Yes, and I, I had no, no qualms with Dom at all, and he was, you, you know, uh, very quiet at times. Actually, you know, there was, I think, more of a... There's always a mystique and a mystery around uh, special advisers than, than the reality. Yeah. Um, uh, How was his eyesight? <laughs> well, well, well. This is this is the other point. I mean, because he is a genius, literal genius, and, and Benjamin's absolutely right, which is why I think you can have a conversation with him. But the idea, as a presentation to the public, to say he's coming back, that just harks the country all the way back to those COVID it years, does, no, those absolutely. lockdown parties, yeah. and, and people will be even more fed up with this government to think that it's just the same old faces, the same old machine, and they will maybe vote for change if he had such a, a, a public uh, there, or, or, or actual role. There is precedent for this behaviour, of course, because Peter Mann probably the mm. Labour equivalent of Dominic Cummings. He was thrown out of Cabinet twice for controversies, for sort of dodgy purchasing of houses, mm. and went off to the EU for many years. And then in quite the shock, in, what, 2009, was it? Gordon Brown picks up the phone to a man he'd always loathed, uh, in Peter Mandelson's words, and says, will you come back and help me navigate the way through? He was appointed as Deputy Prime Minister all of a sudden. That was the effective role he held. So, you know, if Rishi Sunak's looking at how Gordon Brown managed to get a relatively good result after 13 years in power, then you would say that there's, there's some value in bringing back the bad guy Ooh. because they're just too good to not... Well, I mean, if you missed the first part of the show, we had Mystic Veg on, um, <laughs> which is... <laughs> Asparagus predicting the future. <laughs> and it didn't predict Dominic Cummings, did it? No. No, so no mention of Dominic obviously. there, so we wait and see. Uh, you're watching and listening to GB News Sunday with me, Dawn Neeson. Lots more coming up in today's show. Uh, New Year's resolutions. Why do we set them and does anyone ever stick to them? I'll be joined by a psychologist to explain what they can mean and how they can be bad for us as well. All of that and much more to come. You're watching and listening to GB News, Britain's news channel. Don't go too far. Join us every night on GB News at 11pm for Headliners, which is three top comedians going through the next day's news stories, which is exactly what you need, because when the establishment has gone crazy, you need some craziness to make sense of it. Headliners, you don't have to bother reading the newspaper, we've got it covered for you. Every night at 11pm and repeated every morning at 5am. We won't send you to sleep like some of the other paper review shows out there. So join us 11pm every night on GB News. The People's Channel, Britain's news channel. I think the most exciting bit for me is talking to people. People who I think are ignored often by the major news channels, we're going to give news they want to hear. There's a voice there that needs to be heard. I think there's a chance here for a diversity of opinion to be expressed, which you don't find elsewhere. It's really exciting. We don't hold back. We're free to say how decisions that are taken here affect us all around the country. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Michelle Jubery, and I'm not here to tell you what to think. I'd much rather hear what you have to say. So, send in your opinions to gbviews at gbnews.com. Keep them clean, and you never know, I might read them out. With my panel here on Jubes & Co, we debate, we get stuck into the issues of the day on a show where all views are welcome, especially yours. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. In the GB Newsroom, we bring you the news as it happens with our team of dedicated journalists across the UK. We're ready to give you accurate reporting every day. When the news breaks, we'll be there with bulletins on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Your weekend starts here with Friday Night Live with me, Mark Dolan, 8 till 9 on GB News. Big stories, big guests and big laughs as we get you ready for a cracking weekend. That's Friday Night Live with Mark Dolan. Fridays 8 till 9 on GB News. Bring your own drinks. The admission's free. 
Good afternoon, Britain. Good afternoon, Britain. Join us, Tom and Emily, to find out what's happening in the heart of Westminster and why it matters to you. Weekdays from midday, we bring you the most compelling stories from across the United Kingdom. And from your doorstep to our inbox. That's right, we want to hear from you. GB News, Britain's news channel. Big news, big debates, big opinion. Patrick Christie's Tonight is the week's biggest show. Every weekday, 9 to 11 p.m., we've got the inside track on the day's top stories. There'll be sharp takes you won't get anywhere else. We will set the news agenda, not just follow it, and I want to bring you along for the ride. Whatever it is, we'll have our finger on the pulse. It's news, but it's this close to entertainment. Patrick Christie's Tonight, 9 to 11 p.m., only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. GB News is Britain's news channel, and now you can support it. All you have to do is scan that QR code that's up on your screen right now, or you can go to gbnews.com forward slash support and become a GB News member. You'll have fantastic benefits. We're also going to organise special events where you as GB News members can meet the presenters, the on-screen faces, scan the QR code or go to gbnews.com slash support. Thank you so much. Welcome back to GB News Sunday with me, Dawn Neeson, on your TV, online and on digital radio. Now, Britain is set for New Year's Eve weather chaos as experts have forecast 70 mile an hour winds and even tornadoes. A yellow weather warning for rain has also been issued by the Met Office in some regions with heavy downpours expected to cause flooding and travel chaos. Oh, dear Lord. Doesn't get any better, does it? Uh, joining me now is meteorologist John Hammond to explain exactly how much of a soggy New Year rather than a happy New Year we're going to have. John, thank you very much for joining joining us this afternoon. Um, John, well, it's not going to be good, is it? Um, no. Um, I'm standing here in Yorkshire, actually, where it's absolutely flat calm. There is no wind at all. So most of the action in terms of wind, Dawn, is further south across the country. It's southern parts of Wales and southern England. They're going to get a buffeting through the rest of today and tonight. So I think some New Year celebrations could well be affected, maybe even cancelled. If you are planning on going to one then check with the organizers because as you say gusts of 70 miles an hour maybe even more than that possible in exposed places through the rest of this afternoon and into the night as well and some heavy rain too um and that is really the story through the next sort of well 18 hours or so so southern air is getting buffeted by very strong winds yeah with some trees down just as you're seeing there um with heavy rain too whereas further north the winds are now much lighter so whereas northern areas have had a a lot of disruption uh, from wind and rain and snow over the last couple of days. It's the focus in the south now as we go through the rest of today and into tomorrow. So, so yep, go on. John, John <laughs> tell us about this um, analysis at the uh, Tornado and Storm Research Organisation have warned that we are at threat of tornadoes as well. What's this one about? Yep. It's possible. There were tornadoes a couple of days ago in the Greater Manchester area and the atmosphere is in the same sort of state, Dawn. It's very what we call unstable, very volatile. Low pressure sucks air up, literally. And when you get air rising, it can form little vortices like that. And there is the potential through the rest of this evening and overnight for some of those small tornadoes, but boy, very, very damaging tornadoes to whip up across parts of southern England. Now, in any one place and at any one time, uh, the chance of that is very, very small. But if you get hit by one, you know all about it, don't you? So that is one to watch and into tomorrow morning as well. You're going to be wondering, you know, when's it going to settle down? Well, mm -hmm. there are going to be some big changes over the next week, Dawn. And actually, by this time next week, we'll be talking about frost and snow and ice. So, you okay. know, you pay your money, you take your choice. Do you right. prefer wind and rain and tornadoes or do you prefer uh, blizzard conditions? So we're going to get potentially both over the next week to 10 days. Right, brilliant. Thank you very much. I'm not entirely sure you've helped that much there, but uh, um, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Right, now, in the movies, New Year's Eve is full of excitement, sparkly outfits and surprise kisses at midnight. But in the real world, New Year's Eve means one thing, the new year 
and all those resolutions, rules and restrictions we put on ourselves. Why do we do this? From giving up booze to hitting the gym, cutting our screen time to swearing less, often all at the same time. Um, why do we start the new year with all these rules? It's the most miserable time of the year in any case. And why? We do, when we can never stick to them in any case. Uh, let's find out what's going on with these New Year's resolutions um, uh, by talking to Lucy Beresford. Hello, Lucy, a broadcaster and psychotherapist. Lucy, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon and Happy New Year. Why do we put ourselves through this, Lucy? Well, it just seems like a very convenient watershed. It's the passing of one year and the start of another. And mentally, it feels like a, a step in the, in the right direction. But as you say, the problem is we often put too much pressure on ourselves. We make those resolutions far too big and far too undigestible. But at the same time, we need to give ourselves a bit of a push. We need to give ourselves a bit of motivation. So whether that's uh, you wanting to cut your smoking or you want to find the love of your life, uh, this is the night where you have that resolve, what we call intentionality. It gives you that extra spur to say, right, from tomorrow, my new life begins. But that is an awful lot of pressure, mental health-wise, Lucy, isn't it? And, and as you say, we set ourselves unrealistic tasks rather than sort of like, I'm going to start jogging around the block. It's like, I'm going to run a marathon by the end of January. Why, why are we so hard on ourselves? <laughs> And you and me both, you and I ran a marathon last January in aid of prostate cancer, but we did it <laughs> a little bit every day. Mm. And I think that that's the perfect way to do it. It's a little bit like saying, I am going to find the love of my life by Friday, instead of saying, I will go on to dating apps. I mean, the, the really interesting thing is that dating apps in particular will see a massive spike in people <laughs> logging on. And even, even sites like Ashley Madison, the, the married dating website people, they will see people who've been reflecting on the maybe the year that's gone or maybe the mm. past week where you've been sitting at home and your loved ones have ceased to be your loved ones after that expen extended time together. It's about recognizing that you can make these tiny changes. You can have a really big goal, set your emotional GPS, if you like, and say, I want to have, I want to change my career. I want to go traveling, but you still have to get in the car. You still have to switch the engine on. You still have to engage the clutch. It's little tiny uh, steps and also little detours that actually maybe going to the gym isn't really going to do it for you, but actually finding a walking club or mm. uh, going swimming might change it. That actually it's about finding the thing that will work for you as opposed to downloading all of these ideas that work for everybody else. But be gentle on yourself, I think, is the main advice, Lucy, is it? As always, kindness and compassion. We're, we're almost the last people that we give that to. And in a way, instead of maybe 2024 being about what we can give up, maybe it's about the things that we take on board and being kinder to ourselves and to other people. That would be an amazing start. Lucy, you. thank you so much for joining us and a very happy new year. Um, right, you're listening and watching to GB News Sunday with me, Dawn Neeson. Lots more coming up, but first, let's check out the weather again, shall we? Not good. <laughs> a brighter outlook with Bob Solar. Sponsors of weather on GB News. Good morning. Welcome to your latest GB News weather forecast. I'm Craig Snell. Well, as we go through New Year's Eve, for most of us, it's going to be a mixture of bright spells and scattered showers. So it's not quite the case for the far north of Scotland here. It's actually going to be quite a wet and windy end to 2023. But uh, elsewhere, there will be some sunshine, as I mentioned, but also a scattering of showers initially across the west, but they will spread their way eastwards as we go through the course of the day. Some of these will be quite heavy. Could even hear the odd rumble of thunder. Quite blustery too across the the south coast and with winds coming in from the northwest a little bit of a cooler day compared to yesterday but temperatures still doing fairly reasonably could see highs reaching about nine to ten degrees across the south then as we head towards midnight for most of us it's going to continue with a risk of some showers so have a rain jacket handy for scotland it might well turn a little bit dry here as we go past midnight but that may allow it to turn fairly chilly elsewhere temperatures not falling much lower than about five to seven degrees in the southern half of the uk so for that warm feeling inside from boxed boilers sponsors of weather on gb news 
2024, a battleground year. The year the nation decides. As the parties gear up their campaigns for the next general election. Who will be left standing when the British people make one of the biggest decisions of their lives? Who will rise? And who will fall? Let's find out together. For every moment, the highs, the lows, the twists and turns. We'll be with you for every step of this journey. In 2024, GB News is Britain's election channel. GB News, unlike other broadcasters, isn't obsessed with the London Westminster bubble. We think there's a nation beyond the M25, and that's why we talk about the issues that matter across the land. Join me on State of the Nation, 8 to 9 o'clock, Monday to Thursday, on GB News. Daisy's listening, and you should too. Wake up to the headlines with Headliners every morning at 5 a.m. We treat you to the day's biggest stories before anyone else, seven days a week. You can catch up on everything you need to know before you've even had your kippers. Mmm. Headliners every morning at 5 a.m. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Andrew Doyle. Join me at 7 o'clock every Sunday night for Free Speech Nation, the show where I tackle the week's biggest stories in politics and current affairs with the help of my two comedian panellists and a variety of special guests. Free Speech Nation, Sunday nights from 7 on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Now then, Lee Anderson here. Join me on GB News on my show, The Real World, every Friday at 7 p.m. I'm not eating bloody cat. Are you Delicious. mental? Open your mouth. OK, here comes a, <laughs> here comes a train. It reminds me of the scene in Singing in the Rain. Adam, is that a good one? Oh, oh. Join me at 7 on GB News, Britain's news channel. What you get for breakfast is something that, if we do our jobs right, you will wake up to news that you didn't know the night before. It's a conversation. It's not just me and Eamon. We want to get to know you, and we want you to get to know us. From 6, it's Breakfast with Eamon and Isabel. Monday to Thursdays on GB News. Britain's News Channel. Have a great Saturday night with me, Leo Curse, on this Saturday Night Showdown. It's a crazy world out there, so come and make fun of it with me, my panel of comedians, and a couple of people who actually know what they're talking about. This Saturday Night Showdown is your front row ticket to the clown show. Every Saturday, only on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Good afternoon, Britain. Good afternoon, Britain. Join us, Tom and Emily, to find out what's happening in the heart of Westminster and why it matters to you. Weekdays from midday, we bring you the most compelling stories from across the United Kingdom. And from your doorstep to our inbox. That's right, we want to hear from you. GB News. Britain's news channel. Every Sunday from 11, join Michael Portillo. There will be topical discussion, looking at the week before and the week to come. So kick back and relax at 11am on Sundays on GB News with me, Michael Portillo. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. When the news happens, it happens here. And really important breaking news. Breaking news this morning. On TV, radio and online, the news starts here on Britain's Newsroom. All the biggest stories and the answers that you need from across the UK and beyond. Join Britain's Newsroom from 9.30 on GB News. The People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. Welcome back to GB News Sunday and Happy New Year's Eve. I'm Dawn Neeson and for the next hour I'll be keeping you company this New Year's Eve on TV, online and on digital radio. Coming up this hour, I'll be speaking to pub, club and bar owners across the country, finding out how they're preparing for the big night celebrations. And New Year's Eve means one thing, lots of fireworks. They're all fun and games, but what do they do to our animals, our pets? Dogs suffer so much, don't they? Plus, we'll be looking back and forward to major royal events from 2023 and 2024 with a royal expert. And we'll be starting the New Year's Eve celebrations early as a mixologist joins us to demonstrate the perfect champagne cocktail to start your celebrations off. So get in touch, send me your thoughts on gbviews at gbonews.com. But first, here's the news with Tatiana Sanchez. Dawn, thank you very much and good afternoon. This is the latest from the GB Newsroom. Rishi Sunak struck an optimistic tone in his New Year message, promising a brighter future with tax cuts and a reduction in national insurance. He described 2023 as a momentous year, which saw inflation halved and record investment in the NHS. 
That's despite junior doctors in England planning their longest walkout in NHS history next month. The Prime Minister says his New Year's resolution is to keep driving forwards. Inflation is set to fall further, cutting the cost of living for everyone. And we're not stopping there. We're going further to grow our economy by reducing debt, cutting taxes and rewarding hard work, building secure supplies of energy here at home, backing British business and delivering world-class education. Meanwhile, the Labour leader says the power to shape the future of Britain rests in everyone's hands. Sir Keir Starmer's message offered a preview of his party's election campaign, saying 2024 needs to give Britain its future back. In the Labour Party, we've been building to this for four years. We're confident we have a plan that can move our country forward, end the cost of living crisis, take back our streets, get the NHS back on its feet, cheaper energy bills for your home, more opportunities for your children. Boris Johnson's former chief advisor says Rishi Sunak tried to strike what he called a secret deal in a bid to win the next election. Dominic Cummings told the Sunday Times that he was prepared to help the Tories win if he was assured the most critical issues were prioritised. That reportedly includes nuclear weapons infrastructure, future pandemics and artificial intelligence. The proposal was apparently rejected by the Prime Minister. Number 10 did not deny the report, but says Mr Cummings was not offered a position. Eurostar trains are back in service today after flooded tunnels derailed the travel plans for thousands of passengers. All Eurostar services between London and Paris came to a halt yesterday as water flooded a tunnel beneath the River Thames. Many passengers were left facing expensive hotel bills as others desperately searched for alternative travel routes. But services are operating as normal, both tunnels are in service and speed restrictions have now been lifted. The US Navy has thwarted an attempt by militants from the Houthi group to board a container ship in the Red Sea. The US says four vessels from Houthi-controlled areas in Yemen fired at the ship and came dangerously close to boarding it. In response, helicopters from nearby US warships sunk three of the boats. The Houthis, who are backed by Iran, have stepped up attacks on merchant ships as they travel through one of the world's most important freight routes. The group says the attacks are in response to the conflict in Gaza. Loudspeakers and tourist groups are to be banned in Venice as the Italian city looks to clamp down on rowdy visitors. From June, groups larger than 25 people will be blocked from gathering in public areas. The city is also cracking down on the use of noisy speakers. Amid complaints from locals, they cause confusion and disturbance. It follows the introduction of a £4.30 entry fee for tourists in September. Venice is one of Europe's most popular destinations, but residents have complained that too many visitors are ruining the city's character. The Australian journalist John Pilger has died. He came to prominence in the 1960s as chief foreign correspondent for the Daily Mirror in London. The youngest person to receive Britain's prestigious Journalist of the Year award, he was also the first to win it twice. Never far from controversy, his many acclaimed documentaries and books harshly criticised British foreign policy. He was also an outspoken critic of the BBC's impartiality rule and decried mainstream media for what he saw as favouring corporate interests over those of ordinary people. He was 84. And the new year has arrived in Australia, as Sydney welcomed 2024 with a spectacular fireworks display. The famous Harbour Bridge and Sydney Opera House were alight with colours and sparkle, with a spectacular spectacle erupting from landmarks and boats scattered throughout the water. Earlier, the Sky Tower in Auckland, New Zealand was illuminated in blazing colour as the country became one of the first to chime in the new year, though it was beaten by the Pacific nation of Kiribati, which entered the new year at 10 o'clock this morning. This is GB News across the UK on TV, in your car on digital radio and now on your smart speaker by saying, play GB News. Now back to Dawn.
Thank you very much, Tatiana, and welcome back. Now, let's get stuck into today's story, shall we? Um, it's New Year's Eve, you might have noticed. Um, earlier we saw the spectacular fireworks in Sydney as their New Year's Eve celebrations are well underway. And throughout the day, we'll be joining countries across the globe as they count down to the big midnight uh, um, fireworks display as well. But how are we celebrating? Joining me to discuss this is club impresario and veteran promoter Donald McLeod. Donald, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon and Happy New Year to you. Uh, Donald. Yeah, happy New Year to you, yeah. A big, big night for the hospitality industry in general. So what are your plans up in, uh, um, in Glasgow today? Well, in, in Glasgow, yes, no doubt we've been up. What you call an anus horribilis for the past year, Scottish hospitality has declined massively. So, so we're hoping that they all come out tonight, and the signs are good. Um, Glasgow and the Garage and the uh, the Cat House, which are two iconic clubs, remain been running for over thirty years. The ticket sales of you know, sold out of advanced tickets. And so moving forward, looking forward to a really busy night with uh, big visuals. There's no piper, just a countdown. There's going to be uh, indoor fireworks and confetti, cannons, and at the Cash Rock Club, it will be probably Hell's Bells that will bring in from ACDC uh, in New Year and uh, Lock Lomond at the garage by Runrig. So uh, the, it's, it's, it's building up to look at the, you know, a great night. Yeah, definitely. And you've been in the business a very, very long time, Donald, um, very successfully. <laughs> how much, I mean, in a nice way, um, and how much of the hospitality industry has really, really struggled to recover from that pandemic? I read there were sort of a 125 nightclubs and venues closed in the last year alone. Yeah, we're running it in Scotland. Sadly, it's uh, running at double the average of closures than England. It, it's really, really sad. Um, we're seeing massive, you know, closures across the central belt. People, just, you know, it's a cost of living crisis. It's the COVID legacy debt, uh, energy costs, but also in Glasgow, we now have that brutal alien. Donald, debt. sorry, we're, Donald, sorry to interrupt. We're having trouble with your audio there. Um, so let's go back to talk to our lovely panel, Charlie Rowley and Benjamin Butterworth. Um, about New Year's plans. Now, um, young folk are not drinking and partying as much as some of us older folk used to. Now, you used to aren't that young, if you don't mind me saying so. <laughs> but what's going on here? Why aren't people partying anymore? I mean, there's definitely been a sea shift. You know, for a long time, we've been told we should be healthier. I remember, you know, when I was a teenager, it was back in the New Labour days, and everything was about town centre binge drinking. And, you know, it's still a bit of a problem, but it's definitely nothing like it was 20 years ago. And I think this Gen Z, you know, the people under 25, have taken on a lot of the messages. But if you look at the figures, and you were just talking about bars closing, 30% of clubs in the UK, nightclubs that mm. is, have closed since 2020. Mm. Now, that's a huge proportion. And, of course, those places make their money largely off, particularly young people going mm. out and having quite a few drinks. And that's just not the yeah. habit these days. Mm. Actually, I think, can we go back to Donald now? Is Donald back? <laughs> Donald, are you there? I hope so. Yeah, I'm here. Yes, Donald, you thank you. You're back. Yeah. Not sounding like a Dalek this time. So, Donald, you were explaining how important tonight is for your industry. Yes, it's massively important. But as I said to you, I was trying to say, the Scotland's hospitality sector has been decimated this past year. And in Glasgow, particularly with the LEZ coming in, that has really ha had a massive effect on shoppers and clubbers alike, with a mm. lot of people not coming into town because they can't get home uh, or they can't even drive in. So it's been bad. So we're looking forward to Hogmanay in that, that next year, 2024, is a better year. But, you know, what we do need is the hospitality sector needs help from the Scottish Government and that's not been forthcoming because again we were denied a rates relief package which businesses in England got 75% which has kept helped keep many afloat and in Scotland we did not get that we have been denied uh, what we think it should be rightly ours and uh, by the Scottish Government so it's not been helpful um, but you know we've got to be hopeful to, to, you know, New Year is about being hope and uh, and, and looking forward to a better tomorrow. So I'm hopeful that things will change in the near future. But as I say, my clubs have sold out tonight um, at, in advance, which is fantastic. And I hopefully right across Scotland that, that the same applies. Edinburgh, of course, is the home of Hogmanay. It's a home of New Year. And, you know, there's 40,000 revellers going to be hitting the streets tonight. But 
no fireworks. It's going to be a bit woke there. They won't uh, let the fireworks off in Edinburgh. And uh, so tonight you have the common people turning up to see pulp. And uh, last night I was a super trooper uh, watching the ABBA tribute band Bjorn again in the pouring rain. So there you go. Oh, wow, but you're not having fireworks in Edinburgh this year? No, 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 no. They've stopped doing that. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Well, no, I, you know, I mean, it's, 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 it's all this nonsense about the, the carbon emissions and everything else. You know, oh. and I, I, I pick up on your point about animals, but you know, there's ways of keeping animals safe. And, of course, no, absolutely. Part. So there's no fireworks, you know. But the castle, I, was, I must admit, last night I looked at the castle, I looked the way it was lit up. It looked spectacular. But there's nothing like a big cascade of fireworks going over the top of it when the, you know, when the bells come in. Donald, I'm leaving you with so much experience in the nightclub and the party industry. A little bit of advice for anyone watching and listening today as to how to handle the big night tonight. Well, when you're going out, make sure you're taking, you know what you're drinking, you know you're looking after your drink, and then you have friends looking after you. When you come into a licensed establishment such as the garage or cat house, you get looked after. But please help yourself, look after yourself, um, because we can't help you. We can help point you the way home, but just be careful. You know, it's it, it's all about having a good time. It's all about being safe and being protected when you're out and making sure you know what you drink. But, hey, I was uh, a young lad once, and um, I don't think I paid much attention to that advice. <laughs> and my New Year's resolution is to see my cup half full. I feel with rum, whiskey, gin, or whatever. <laughs> a man after my own heart. Donald McLeod, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. A very happy new year to you and yours. Thank Glad you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's water, honestly. It's not gin or vodka, it's just water. But we have... Uh, yeah, I know, it's not the most exciting thing, but, you know, we're trying to be healthy. We do, though, have some champagne cocktails, and we're telling you how to make champagne cocktails coming up, so you don't want to go too far. But let's... I mean, obviously, New Year isn't all about alcohol. They're both looking at me like, really? Wow, no one told us that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's Charlie Rowley and Benjamin Busworth are still with me, as you can see. Um, but it's not all about alcohol. It is about... Saying goodbye to a year that hasn't been that good, let's be honest. We've had some horrible, horrible things happen this year and looking forward to the new year. So, Benjamin, what what are your hopes for the new year? Well, do you know what? I, I, I would turn that question around because I want to answer a different one now. <laughs> it's just... Oh, right, OK, I... fine. <laughs> your show. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, you made a really good point about how, you know... It's you don't about, have to sound it's, so surprised. It's, it's about reflecting and looking forward and, you know... This time last year, my grandmother, the person who raised yes. me, had just been diagnosed with a brain tumour and I knew that she would have weeks, maybe days left. And so I remember that 12 months ago on this day, it felt like it sort of the end of the world was mm. incoming because of the worst news imaginable. And so for me, when I was thinking about it today, I'm just so proud to have got through this year. Aww. You know, it, it was the first Christmas and festive period without either of the people who raised me. Mm. And anyone who's lost their parents, and I know we have lots of older viewers, so it's probably, you know, lots of, lots of people watching this. You know, there were a couple of months of this year where I can't even remember them because you're so deep mm. in shock at that moment. Mm. And so for me, New Year's Eve this time marks something quite profound, which is that to have coped with that to still feel happy and confident and myself at the end of it and to be going into a new year for the first time, you know, the first year in which neither of the people that raised me will be watching over me from the start of that year. That's what it means. And I think I think there are lots of people for which it's it's a sort of turning of a corner that means a lot. I think you're right, and that's it's such a lovely story. And well done you for getting through it. It's, mm. And I think we do need to remember, don't we, Charlie, that it, it's you know we're all talking about partying and champagne and fireworks, but the, there is there are people out there who are suffering emotionally at the moment, and it's it's uh, going into a new year is it can be so overwhelming, as, as, especially as Benjamin's alluded to, if you're bereaved. Yeah, absolutely right. And just as the interview they had with um, uh, the broadcaster and um, uh, psychologist earlier on, it's a kind of a reset moment where you can sort of mm. You know, go into a new year thinking, OK, that was uh, a difficult mm. period of time, mm. but going into January, and it's not... As, just as we talked about before, it's not being too hard on yourself, doing little things 
to either enhance yourself or progress or do something that you want to do, a new hobby, a new skill, not take on the world, not take on all of the, the, the problems and you know, be uh, all things to all people all of the time. Just do small things to A, help you and love yourself, but also be kinder and more generous to mm. other people. It's those small steps to, I think, help you get through into a new year to become a better person and just to see if people have gone through a difficult time, just how great life can be and what positives there are out there. But you, you have to go and get them. But don't put too much pressure on yourself and, and just be the best uh, that you can possibly be. Yeah, and I think you're right. And I think in, uh, certainly in this country, and I think it's getting worse. It feels to me like we're getting worse. We, we, we beat ourselves up so much on everything. Mm. I mean, you know, the country's not great, politics are rubbish, you know, the weather's rubbish, uh, everything's rubbish. And I did so many bad, horrible things that I shouldn't have done, did rather you? than... <laughs> yeah, but that's another story. That's the post-watershed yeah. <laughs> post show, that one. But, but rather than celebrating the good, Mm. Now, I'm, I'm going to look at you on this one, Charlie, because you are, um, you know, a government advisor. The government don't help. They never seem to be that optimistic or positive about things. I mean, they try, but it doesn't really seem to, to, to come across. I think that's absolutely right, actually, because I think, look, it's been... Um, uh, we've seen more politics, I think, in the last decade than what we might have seen before. Now, I know everybody will probably say that. We've seen more prime ministers, that, more home secretaries, more everything. It, it, exactly, exactly. And so I think when you go through such... Um, uh, uh, draining times of sort of having since 2010, you know, a coalition. Mm. And we had one year of a Tory sort of uh, uh, majority before there was you know, four years of you know, infighting about Brexit, which sucked out the energy, I think, of the country. Then a new prime minister. Oh, you mentioned again. the B word. Oh and my then, God, we're still I'm talking sorry, the B I'm word. Oh. And then, and then, you know, COVID obviously came up. So there has been so much that has gone on in this country mm. that has sucked out so much energy and and mm. in, in politics, but in people's day-to-day -day lives. Mm. I think that's why people are generally just more... They just want to see things working again, and some, some of that will take time. But I think there has to be a shift change also in terms of just not relying on the state so much on what politicians are doing. We now need to look at what actually we can do to help yes. ourselves, what contribution we can make to our yeah. communities. How can we make ourselves feel better? How can we be as best as we possibly can be? That doesn't actually have to rely on government sort of telling us what to do I or think, what they think. Exactly, yeah, personal responsibility. And mm. I think the one thing that I was thinking watching the fireworks in Sydney and then talking our, um, to um, Donald McLeod up in, um, in Scotland where the fireworks have been cancelled and Sydney is just doing this massive, brilliant display and everyone's getting behind it and it's wonderful and it's... And why are we so... Blech, rather than celebrating <laughs> some of the good stuff that's great about this country. And there is good stuff, come on. I think we have become terribly negative. Yes. You know, there have been so many arguments. You mentioned Brexit, there was a Scottish referendum. I didn't mention, who mentioned Brexit, Sorry. not me. I and didn't then, say the word. And then we obviously <laughs> have these sort of, you know, a lot more sort of cultural debates than maybe we've had as a country in oh. a long time. And I think there's just a tendency to, to rip pieces out of each other rather than be proud mm. of what we've got in common. Mm. And actually, mm. dare I say, I love Britain. Uh, you know, I think it's got so There's much There's nothing wrong with it. that. It's almost like you I'm have to apologise for saying holiday. that now. Yeah, I'm always proud when I tell people I'm British or a Londoner when I go on holiday. And, you know, maybe that's the New Year's resolution that we should all share, which is to take a bit more satisfaction and pride in, in being British. There are far worse countries, aren't there? <laughs> there totally, are, totally. like Rwanda. We are a great country, but we're a great country because of the people within it, and it's what the people do, not necessarily the politicians all the time. And, you know, we've got you know, the best media, we've got the best universities, we've got the best, you know, best media on this show, you know, uh, this channel, you know, best universities. Yeah. You know, we've got so much going for us that we just don't uh, shout about it enough. But yeah. I do think a lot of people would, would quite like the relief because, you know, on a sort of vague serious note, things like inflation and cost of living and all that really have been exhausting. You know, mm. it's a couple yeah, but they of have, years... But people go, oh, my God, it's all the government... The, the politicians' fault. Not just the government, the politicians' fault. But we have had the pandemic. Yeah. We yeah. have had war in Ukraine. We've had lots of things that we weren't that. expecting to and, go on. And, and our politics has changed so much, not just because of America and the sort of the Trump sort of, you know, things are becoming more black and white, social media, people are either... It's becoming very divisive as a society. Oh. You're either in this uh, category or that or you've, to a particular view, you're either woke or you're not. Uh, you know, just oh. the way in which we sort of, I think, you know, allow ourselves to frame the arguments in particular ways um, has allowed a sort of a, a, a more depressing view to sort of take over when you things, know what, things Charlie, are great. You know country. what, Charlie, the fact that we can't even have a conversation now without people screaming abuse at one another. Mm. I will Don't... stop. That's my resolution. <laughs> yeah, yeah, stop screaming abuse at me, Benjamin. It's nice it's starting to wear a bit. But let's um, read some of your lovely emails about New Year out, see what you're getting out to. Jimmy, good afternoon, Jimmy. Oh, right, OK. Uh, my girlfriend is dragging me out this New Year's Eve and I'm working early tomorrow. I'm going to be running on three hours sleep. 
Welcome to my world, Jimmy. I'm knowing, I'm understanding where you're coming from, my love. Uh, meanwhile, Gary, good afternoon, Gary, says, there, um, Jude Bellingham's performance this year reminds me of the early days of Beckham. It's just flawless football, something extraordinary. I really look forward to document series about his legacy in 20 years. Uh, meanwhile, let's come back to our sports report. Meanwhile, Sophie says, my New Year's resolution is to get life sorted. Baby steps, Sophie, baby steps. I've already brought a £25 digital planner, so I'm already halfway there. That's a good start. However, I did just buy a bottle of Prosecco, so we might be off to a rocky start. It's one bottle. That's, believe me, that's not the end of the yeah, world. I'll get it to half twelve, but after? <laughs> yeah, half past twelve in the <laughs> afternoon, yeah. But um, please do keep your views coming in. Um, subscribe to our YouTube channel as well and follow us on our socials. We're at GB News. It's very, very simple. Now, lots more coming up on the show. We have our Royal Roundup with experts as tens of thousands of people cast their vote on why roles exist. What is that about? I'm asking, why do these polls exist? I mean, I don't understand it. Costing us money as well. All of that and much more to come. I'm Dawn Neeson, and you are watching and listening to GB News, Britain's news channel. Put the kettle on, but don't go too far. Your weekend starts here with Friday Night Live with me, Mark Dolan, 8 till 9 on GB News. Big stories, big guests and big laughs as we get you ready for a cracking weekend. That's Friday Night Live with Mark Dolan. Fridays 8 till 9 on GB News. Bring your own drinks. The admission's free. In the GB Newsroom, we bring you the news as it happens. With our team of dedicated journalists across the UK, we're ready to give you accurate reporting every day. When the news breaks, we'll be there with bulletins on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Big news, big debates, big opinion. Patrick Christie's tonight is the week's biggest show. Every weekday, 9 to 11 p.m., we've got the inside track on the day's top stories. There'll be sharp takes you won't get anywhere else. We will set the news agenda, not just follow it, and I want to bring you along for the ride. Whatever it is, we'll have our finger on the pulse. It's news, but it's this close to entertainment. Patrick Christie's tonight, 9 till 11 p.m., only on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Join us every night on GB News at 11 p.m. for Headliners, which is three top comedians going through the next day's news stories, which is exactly what you need, because when the establishment has gone crazy, you need some craziness to make sense of it. Headliners, you don't have to bother reading the newspaper. We've got it covered for you every night at 11 p.m. and repeated every morning at 5 a.m. We won't send you to sleep like some of the other paper review shows out there. So join us 11 p.m. every night on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Michelle Jubery, and I'm not here to tell you what to think. I'd much rather hear what you have to say. So send in your opinions to gbviews at gbnews.com. Keep them clean, and you never know, I might read them out. With my panel here on Jubes & Co, we debate, we get stuck into the issues of the day on a show where all views are welcome, especially yours. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Tired of the usual focus-tested, pre-prepared Westminster runaround? Well, so am I. So you want higher taxes? Is your department to blame for this? Are you rethinking this policy? Every Sunday at 9.30, I'll be sitting down with those in power to get the truth about the issues affecting you. Let's be honest, we've known about the cost pressures of this project for years, not months. That's the Camilla Tomini Show, a politics show with personality. On GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. I think the most exciting bit for me is talking to people. People who I think are ignored often by the major news channels, we're going to give news they want to hear. There's a voice there that needs to be heard. I think there's a chance here for a diversity of opinion to be expressed, which you don't find elsewhere. It's really exciting. We don't hold back. We're free to say how decisions that are taken here affect us all around the country. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. Good afternoon, Britain. Good afternoon, Britain. Join us, Tom and Emily, to find out what's happening in the heart of Westminster and why it matters to you. Weekdays from midday, we bring you the most compelling stories from across the United Kingdom. And from your doorstep to our inbox. That's right, we want to hear from you. GB News. Britain's news channel.
Welcome back and Happy New Year. Well, what a year it has been for us, but also for the royal family. Uh, we started the year with Prince Harry releasing that controversial memoir, Spare, remember that? Uh, we also saw the coronation of King Charles back in May, and Prince Harry's book wasn't the only literary royal rockers this year, was with Omid Scobie releasing his endgame, his investigation into the state of the royal family. Royal race row, sibling fractions, and much... It's actually like a soap popper, isn't it? It's not even EastEnders, it's like Shameless. Remember Shameless? Seems to be more like that with the Royal Family this year. Um, 2023 also saw the final season of the hit Netflix show, The Crown. And how could we forget the annual Christmas speech, which was the most watched thing on Christmas Day, by the way. Uh, King Charles called for peace as we go into 2024. And as we look ahead to next year, it's been announced that a new poll will ask the public on the opinions of the Royal Family at a cost of around about £1.8 million of taxpayers' money. That's us, by the way. Um, joining me very soon to unpick the last 12 months of the Royals in a very short period of time, so it's talk very fast, is historian and broadcaster Rafe Hado Manku. Um, thank you very much, Rafe, for joining us here, actually in the studio. You made it. Congratulations. It's New Year's Eve. Anything can go wrong. The party's already started for some of us. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, um, it's only water. Right, Rafe, I want to start with this poll. What is this about? Why, why do we need a poll to ask us about yes. what we think about the royal family? What a useless poll this is. I mean, the government does these periodically, but the, you know, the reality is we know what the public thinks about the monarchy. Ipsos Mori have conducted the same poll every year for 30 years, since 1993. Support for the monarchy never really wavers below 65% or so. It's now around 66 or whatever it is. Uh, the public, we've seen the success of the, of the last year, shows public interest in the monarchy we've had. You know, well, last year's Christmas speech was the most most watched Christmas speech yes. of the 21st century. Wow. Uh, the coronation was the most watched event of the year. Yep. Uh, the Christ on Christmas Day, the most watched programme was, of course, the Christmas speech. And on Boxing Day, the most watched programme was the uh, King's coronation documentary on the BBC. Why we need to go to, to have this discussion, I have no idea. But, you know, and, but the King actually ha needs to have a chance also to convey his image of the monarchy to the public. You know, that's the purpose of 2023, I think, was the King trying to set the tone for his reign and also reveal to the public the sort of king he's going to be and I think he's done that very well. Say, do you think he's done a good job of it? I think he has done. I mean look if you look at them the, I think the coronation really symbolizes his attitude towards the, the monarchy. It retained the service retained all of its majesty and its dignity but it was tweaked to make it more relevant and more reflective of the modern world around us and I think that's really how the king views the monarchy under his reign and of course we've seen also you know internationally he's been a huge success and proven himself to be every bit the, a worthy successor to his mother. That rapturous was he received in Germany, mm -hmm. where everyone loved that speech he gave at the Bundestag. Then in France, adulation and this endless standing ovation after giving a speech to the, in the French Assembly. And then, of course, as head of the Commonwealth, making that first visit to Kenya, where which was potentially fraught with problems because of the way that of the course, British handled yes. the Mau Mau uprising. And the brilliant diplomacy with which he handled that, listening to their concerns, he actually won the respect of Kenyans for that. So I think on all those levels, actually, it's been a terrific success for, for His Majesty. So if he's the royal hero of 2023, who's the royal zero of 2023? Well, I promised my, my followers I wouldn't be mentioning Harry much in 2024. Too late. But uh, <laughs> as you've asked me the question, yes, well, look, you know, the Queen famously said 92 was her uh, annus horribilis. I think we can agree that for, for Harry and Meghan, 2023 has been their annus horribilis. Oh. Uh, because it's primarily <laughs> Prince Harry, I think, that's made this a disastrous year for, 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 the, for the Montecito duo, topping and tailing of course, the year with two disastrous books, Spare, as you said, which uh, made the, them into a laughing stock globally. That gave South Park their worldwide privacy tour. Yes, and we saw it them did, be, didn't we it? We saw yeah. them being mocked by Family Guy in every late night talk show. And then, of course, ending the year also with uh, Endgame, written by uh, Omid Scobie, you know, selfie stick in waiting to the Duke and Duchess. <laughs> uh, and I think, you know, one, and then the, the loss of Frogmore Cottage, their poll ratings taking a nosedive, they'll be very happy to see an end to this we year. We had, and you'll be sorry you missed this because it was really entertaining. We had Mystic Veg on in the first part of the show, <laughs> um, who brilliantly uses asparagus to predict the future. Obviously. I thought it would be a cauliflower or something. No, 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 no. <laughs> cauliflower doesn't work ever then, so it has to be asparagus. But her prediction for Harry and Meghan was there was a split looming. 
What do you make of that? Well, you know, every time you, you, you go on the internet, there's another royal expert forecasting that there's a split or they're happy. I, you know, none of us are privy to that information, I would say. Um, but we'll see whether Mystic Veg is pr proven true Who's, or not. I think the, the uh, I think that they'll, they'll last longer than any asparagus will. I think that's the well, most I'll say again, about I, that. To be <laughs> honest with you, Rafe, that asparagus was eaten for dinner um, straight after it gave us that exclusive. So that's slightly worrying. But there are some highlights to, to look at next year. We've got... Um, um, of course, the 60th birthday of the Duke of Edinburgh, of, uh, of Prince Edward. Uh, the Is big, it 60 already? The big 4-0 for Prince, Prince Harry, getting a bit long in the tooth there. Wow. Uh, to mark also. Uh, we may see Prince George go off to public school uh, this year. He'll be turning 11, and it's usually year 7 or year 9 when you're 13 that you go off to see that. Also, the King notably hasn't made an official visit to any of his realms yet, apart from the UK. Mm. Uh, and we think he may go to Canada in May for a week. And then he has Chogham, the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in Samoa. And en route to there, he may stop in Australia and New Zealand for their first visit. So those will be other highlights of the year to come. And uh, the popularity, despite this ridiculous poll, you predict will carry on growing? Yeah, well, there's ne you know, Ipsos Mori have said that there's never been a single poll they've ever taken that's more consistent than the 30-year approval rating for the monarchy. Now, there are challenges. We have the most radically woke left-wing youth in history, and they're not becoming more conservative, and they don't have as much support for the monarchy. And, of course, we now have 4.2 million people who've arrived in the last decade. Uh, so immigration is another problem because they don't have the same cultural no, attachments sure. or emotional attachments or historical knowledge. So those are two big challenges for the future. But overall, the monarchy is perfectly fine and secure. Cool. Brilliant, thank you very much. That is our um, Rafe Halo Mancou there with his Royal Crystal Ball. Now, you are watching and listening to GB News Sunday with me, Dawn Neeson. Stay with us as we're bringing you the New Year celebrations early with a mixologist. But first, here's the news with Tatiana. Dawn, thank you very much. This is the latest from the GB Newsroom. Rishi Sunak struck an optimistic tone in his New Year message, promising a brighter future with tax cuts and a reduction in national insurance. He described 2023 as a momentous year, which saw inflation halved and record investment in the NHS. That's despite junior doctors in England planning their longest walkout in NHS history next month. The Prime Minister says his New Year's resolution is to keep driving forward. Boris Johnson's former chief adviser says Rishi Sunak tried to strike what he called a secret deal in a bid to win the next election. Dominic Cummings told the Sunday Times that he was prepared to help the Tories win if he was assured the most critical issues were prioritised. That reportedly includes nuclear weapons infrastructure, future pandemics and artificial intelligence. The proposal was apparently rejected by the Prime Minister. Number 10 did not deny the report, but says Mr Cummings was not offered a position. Eurostar trains are back in service today after a burst pipe derailed the travel plans for thousands of passengers. All Eurostar services between London and Paris came to a halt yesterday as water flooded a tunnel beneath the River Thames. Many passengers were left facing expensive hotel bills as others desperately searched for alternative travel routes. Services are now running normally, however congestion is expected while the backlog is cleared. And the new year has arrived in Australia as Sydney welcomed 2024 with a spectacular fireworks display. The famous Harbour Bridge and Sydney Opera House were alight with colours and sparkle with the spectacular spectacle erupting from landmarks and boats scattered throughout the water. Earlier, the Sky Tower in Auckland, New Zealand was illuminated in blazing colour as the country became one of the first to chime in the new year, though it was beaten by the Pacific nation of Kiribati, which entered the new year at 10 o'clock this morning. For more on all of those stories, you can visit our website, gbnews.com.
GB News is Britain's news channel, and now you can support it. All you have to do is scan that QR code that's up on your screen right now, or you can go to gbnews.com forward slash support and become a GB News member. You'll have fantastic benefits. We're also going to organise special events where you as GB News members can meet the presenters, the on-screen faces, scan the QR code or go to gbnews.com slash support. Thank you so much. Big news, big debate, big opinion. Patrick Christie's Tonight is the week's biggest show. Every weekday, 9 to 11 p.m., we've got the inside track on the day's top stories. There'll be sharp takes you won't get anywhere else. We will set the news agenda, not just follow it, and I want to bring you along for the ride. Whatever it is, we'll have our finger on the pulse. It's news, but it's this close to entertainment. Patrick Christie's Tonight, 9 to 11 p.m., only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. Now then, Lee Anderson here. Join me on GB News on my show, The Real World, every Friday at 7 p.m. I'm not eating bloody cat. Are you Delicious. Put your mouth. OK, here comes, a, here comes a train. Reminds me of the scene in Singing in the Rain. Adam, is that a good one? Whoa! Whoa! Join me at 7 on GB News, Britain's news channel. I'm Andrew Doyle. Join me at 7 o'clock every Sunday night for Free Speech Nation, the show where I tackle the week's biggest stories in politics and current affairs with the help of my two comedian panellists and a variety of special guests. Free Speech Nation, Sunday nights from 7 on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. What you get for breakfast is something that, if we do our jobs right, you will wake up to news that you didn't know the night before. It's a conversation. It's not just me and Eamon. We want to get to know you, and we want you to get to know us. From 6, it's Breakfast with Eamon and Isabel. Monday to Thursdays on GB News. Britain's news channel. Wake up to the headlines with Headliners every morning at 5 a.m. We treat you to the day's biggest stories before anyone else, seven days a week. You can catch up on everything you need to know before you've even had your kippers. Mmm. Headliners every morning at 5am, only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. Every Sunday from 11, join Michael Portillo. There will be topical discussion, looking at the week before and the week to come. So kick back and relax at 11am on Sundays on GB News with me, Michael Portillo. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Michelle Jubery, and I'm not here to tell you what to think. I'd much rather hear what you have to say. So, send in your opinions to gbviews at gbnews.com. Keep them clean, and you never know, I might read them out. With my panel here on Jubes & Co, we debate, we get stuck into the issues of the day on a show where all views are welcome, especially yours. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Have a great Saturday night with me, Leo Curse, on this Saturday Night Showdown. It's a crazy world out there, so come and make fun of it with me, my panel of comedians, and a couple of people who actually know what they're talking about. This Saturday Night Showdown is your front row ticket to the clown show. Every Saturday, only on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Welcome back to GB News Sunday with me, Dawn Neeson, on your TV, online and on digital radio. Now, what better way to end the programme with a cocktail tasting extravaganza? Mm. Joining us now is Jean Vital, is that pronounced yes, correctly? It's right. uh, founder of the Cocktail Circus. Mm. And I am still with the lovely Rafe, who is volunteered to help me out in this odious task that we have to face because obviously this is the big cocktail night of the year champagne cocktails in particular um so what are you going to make for us so i will propose you a couple of drinks actually and the first one will be very focused on champagne as you say champagne is what we need for this time of the year so we have a very like um, glamorous presentation let's say with a little bit of uh, strawberry sugar on the rim and some Ooh, candy floss so is that that's like candy floss yeah candy floss but proper candy one floss that we have when we're yes. kids yes. yeah exactly Marvelous. we bring all the childhood memories yeah not just when we're kids <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i'm using the candy floss as a sweetener and i will just right it up with some champagne okay, now call me a philistine but i mean if you're putting oh wow yeah it just disappears it dissolves basically 
But doesn't that make the champagne too sweet? This is why there is an extra ingredient that will balance right. the sweetness. Right, oh. OK, I'm peaking too I soon here. Yeah. Campari, I suspect. Yeah, if you, if you are listening on radio, um, it's we have three glasses with pink sugar around them. They're coupe glasses, aren't they? Um, and they had, like, the pink candy floss that you used to have from fairgrounds when you were a kid. Yeah. So you just pour the champagne over it. Normal uh, measure of champagne. Oh. Yes, and in this little uh, bottle, I got a blend of uh, berries liquor and roots liquor. Oh! I don't know if you're familiar with gentian. No. So it's very rooty, you will see. It will bring some. Uh, so it's Bailey's, did you say? Berries. Berries, berries liquor. So you just have to put a little extra one. So it's like half a shot half of a shot. berries. Liquor. Yeah. Can you buy this in supermarkets? Of course. Is it, can I say the brand name? Is it okay? Yeah. Yeah, so it is some Chambord. I'm using Chambord. Oh, okay, oh, fine. Yeah, heard nice. of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the gentian liquor, I'm using a liquor from the Chartreuse uh, Monastery. You know, right, green yes, Chartreuse. Right, yes, of course. Um, they're very popular for green Chartreuse oh, and yep, yellow yes. Chartreuse, but mm -hmm. they do some other product and one of them is a gentian liqueur it's one of the most wonderful products you can find wow so please thank you very much and this is a perfect new year eve cocktail new year's day cocktail when should one drink this one i mean champagne there is you can drink as soon as you wake up basically you know so there is no churchill had a pint imperial pint for breakfast every exactly day. yes because <laughs> the bottle was too much wasn't it yeah but, um... i think paul roger created a small bottle ex that's right. Especially for him. Yes, it was. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, uh, I'm doing this for you, dear, um, dear viewers and uh, um, and uh, listeners. Uh, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. See, uh, it's very pink. It matches my jacket, actually, and and indeed your bow tie. Well, that's lovely. Oh, that's divine. Refreshing. Sweet. You know what? <laughs> I, that actually really works. I, I would never have thought of putting champagne and candy floss together <laughs> in the same glass. I think one of the most classic cocktails you have is a champagne cocktail. Yes. And we are using actually a cube of sugar ah, at the bottom right. of the cube. So let's say the candy floss is replacing yes. the cube of sugar. Right, OK. So that would make a perfect breakfast drink on New Year's Day, obviously. Yeah. Like with yep. absinthe, you have your sugar as well. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yeah. absolutely. OK, that's lovely. Um, so that's one for breakfast. What, yes. Um, and we have one we for having? just before lunch. So this one is... Was quite a trendy uh, cocktail this year. I will do what we call a Negroni Sbagliato. A, a, a Negroni Sbagliato. <laughs> Negroni. Right, OK, with you. But, but the Sbagliato. So <laughs> right. we are switching gin for champagne. Oh, OK. Oh. So we go for a good measure of uh, Campari. Yeah. So I find Negroni not sweet enough usually. So I'm curious how this mm. will taste. That is very nice. OK, so that's a, a single shot, yes? Yes, we go for a single shot of Sweet Vermouth. So I'm using a Rubino for Martini. Because I always find with cocktails, I always put too much alcohol in. You know, it's like you're meant to do a measure and it's like I'm just going... Yeah, I mean... Free pouring is the best way to do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, will, I will tell you, with the new tax on alcohol, people they will have to measure. Yes, no, that's true. Yeah. So what, what was that one you've just added there? So this one is from Sweet Vermouth. Right, and to give a little uh, berry twist again, I'm using some slow gin. Slow gin, right? Yes, okay. so just a little touch. So I'm using so a that's slow gin. A single shot of each. Yeah, like this one a little bit less than a single shot. And that has half the less alcohol of normal yes. gin. Yes. This one is quite strong, it's a German one. Oh. So ah. I choose this one because there is a lot of um, almondy flavor note on it, what I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. So we go for a couple of ice. A little bit more sample. Oh, yeah. Fill up your glass. And now we're adding ice to it. So this is being served in, if you're listening on the radio, being served in a tumbler glass. Yeah. Um, so the three shots go in, then you top it up with ice. It's looking very strong. You will see. So okay. we have a little... <laughs> a little delicious. It will be quite strong, yes, compared to the first one. That's a good sound effect on the radio. And you're, you're using a very long spoon, but you can just use a teaspoon, can't you, I'm assuming? <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. And now we are topping it up with... Yeah, just a champagne. little... Let's say the same amount of champagne than you have as a liquid. Right, OK. Just a, li a little spritz of it, you know. There we go. Next, a little round right. to make sure the champagne... The classic spaghetti is made with uh, sparkling Italian wine, usually. Right, OK. But because of the occasion, let's say we did a little upgrade. And for the garnish, we can go with something very popular here, like a little terry orange. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So, so can... that's like the little yes, chocolate, you... little chocolate uh, exactly. oranges. You can that's get this one at the end. As soon as you finish, this one will sink at the bottom. So it will be the perfect little snack to get at the end. Right. Thank you very much. Thank little you, treat for Thank the you. end. 
So this one will be more surprising for you. You have some uh, winey and bitter nut. Mm -hmm. So it's quite an, I wouldn't say not an advanced cocktail, but you need to know your drinks to appreciate this. Right, OK, fine. Right, I'll get, we're going in for you, yeah. um, <laughs> just to make sure, you know, we, we don't want you trying anything that's not going to do you any good. Oh! Ooh. That's lovely. That is more sophisticated. Yeah. It's, I prefer it to a Negroni. It's got more of a punch to it and it's a bit sweeter. Mm. Oh, lovely. Well done. That's very nice. I'll have to that one. watch this on rewind and make it myself <laughs> later <Yeah>. on today. <laughs> yes, all, yeah, all, all, the, uh, um, all the ways to make these cocktails will be on the website as well. And uh, you can watch it on YouTube as well just to, um, just to get into practice for it. Obviously, you can start now because it is New Year's Eve. So, wh when would be the good time to drink this one? Is it so tonight the, or tomorrow for the so hair this of the dog one, thing? Think it's a perfect drink to have beforehand, before dinner. Right. And um, it's always recommended for bitter to be consumed before dinner. You open up appetite. Ah, OK. And because of the champagne fact as well, it's a good one to finish the dinner. Actually, right. You know? so, so an aperitif? Yes, yeah, this is where I would recommend it. But after, it's very good to have during the dinner as well. There's okay. nothing wrong about that. Uh -huh. mm. Now, this is the, we've been asking everybody this. is. It's New Year's Eve, right? Notoriously, it's very difficult to pace yourself on New Year's Eve. I mean, you know, you might go and visit someone this afternoon. Would you like a glass of champagne? So by the time you actually get to the big midnight countdown, as a cocktail mixologist and a total expert, how do you pace yourself? What's the secret? The secret is to be drunk before midnight. And, uh, that what wasn't I... quite what I was expecting to <laughs> yes, hear, but, but that works. Yes, and uh, you will be able to survive the evening. But usually it's like a very chill evening for bartenders. It's quite enjoyable, actually, because we celebrate with the guests, but we also celebrate with our colleagues. So it's quite a joyful moment right. for, uh, for the industry. OK, yeah. yeah. And the industry obviously has suffered enormously during the pandemic and the lockdown and things like that. They did, yes. And the, the, the news story today was that a fifth of youngsters are just not drinking anymore. Have you noticed that in your industry? Uh, no. Ah. No, I think there is a lot of people that want to push some non-alcoholic trends mm -hmm. up front because I think there is a lot of investment behind those new trends. And you will find more people drinking less, let's say, but those people drink also, let's say. You know what I mean? It's, I think it's too early to say it. Right. You know, it's just start, basically. Yes. So I think we can talk about what actually really happened in a few years from yeah. now. Mm -hmm. But if young people stop to drink, it's not great news for us, let's say. No, of it's course it's not. It's great not news for the news craft. At all. Yeah, and there is a lot of job at risk yes. if the trench. And if okay. somebody, I mean, obviously, you know, we, we have been making lots of laughing and joking about drinking as New Year's Eve, et cetera, et cetera. But obviously, it is a difficult time of year if you are struggling with alcohol. So, can you make these cocktails with low alcohol or no alcohol in There is definitely a possibility to uh, switch every product I use for non alcoholic version. Right. Um, the taste will be slightly different because it's impossible to recreate 100% the alcohol flavor, let's say. But yeah, you can find definitely some uh, good ingredients around to switch for everything. The only problem I will say with those non-alcohol options, they come up as a price of alcoholic option. They do, don't they? They are yes. actually, in some cases, they're actually more expensive. Exactly. Actually. So this is why I don't know if we are ready to justify those prices, mm. you know, to pay a bottle the same price as a an alcoholic bottle, you know, I mean, it just doesn't make sense for me. And it will be the customer and the guest to decide, basically. It's not us to force the people. They mm -hmm. will have to be willing to spend the same amount of money as they will buy some alcohol. Yeah, exactly. And obviously, is, are you working tonight? How are you celebrating tonight? Uh, tonight, I've got... Actually, that's pri like a well chat-up line, isn't it? <laughs> Fancy coming around. <laughs> yeah, pri pri uh, privilege of the age. I, tonight, I will leave the position to younger people. I will be home by seven and celebrate with family. Oh, nice. oh that's yes. very, very yeah. civilised. Yeah. I must admit, I think I might be doing that as well. Yeah, so I gave my time for late so nights you, you, and... Because in your industry, it's busy, the, the busiest time of year, isn't it? It so is one of the busiest times of the year. Yeah, I will say with um, uh, Halloween. And Valentine's Day, yes, those of three. Uh, yes, that's which, the day you want to be off, basically. Usually. Yes, yeah. yeah, Valentine's Day, which happens to be um, my husband's birthday is the day before Valentine's Day. So it's just like everything is busy and overpriced and everything else. Um, right, the, the royals like to drink, didn't they? I mean, didn't the Queen famously have a, a, a pour her first cocktail at um, lunchtime? That's right. Well, every day would have her gin and dubonnet, which was yeah. uh, one measure less than yeah. her mother. Her mother liked them much more, much str more strongly. Yeah. In fact, in, this year I was in Malta staying at the Phoenicia, which was the Queen's favourite hotel when she was in Malta. And I'd, 
I ordered her favourite drink and they didn't know how to make it, so I got the barman and I showed him how to make it and he's taught everyone there now. Oh, no, <laughs> That's been my greatest achievement of the year, was teaching the barman there to make the Queen's favourite drink. <laughs> what, what do you make of the Queen's choice of cocktail? It sounds a bit old-fashioned. Uh, I think... It... I'm sure she will be. She will enjoy a good martini, a good gin martini. I don't know why I feel like she's this kind of person to enjoy a nice martini with, like, you know, like the James Bond style. Mm -hmm. I feel she will be. It's always made with Plymouth gin. But the, the very first gin martini was made with Plymouth gin, and I like Franklin Roosevelt's way of making it. He would get a bottle of vermouth and shine a moonbeam through it <laughs> and put the bottle down. Yeah, happened. and there is a lot of reason for that because back to the times, the um, dry vermouth used in uh, this cocktail was French. And it was just like a little bit of a banter, you know? To, it was one of the stories I heard about it. This is why they didn't want to use it, and they make it stronger, neat. We call it like Churchill Martini, or we call it a naked martini. That's right. Mm. Right, OK. So what about, what about King Charles? Is King Charles following his mother's and his grandmother's footsteps? Actually, I don't know what his favourite cocktail is. I would imagine gin and tonic or something like that, but he doesn't drink as much. But, of course, he's got his wonderful high-grove range of wines. And they now do superb sparkling wines, which have won a lot of uh, awards, and red wine and white wine. So he, he actually is very involved in the, mm. the, the, the business of booze. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it is a big business now, isn't it? Wine in particular. I mean, and I hate to say this, but English wines are now taking on the French. I'm, I'm up, very happy to, to say it. I mean, uh, there is a lot of uh, French consultancy behind all the... or you call that the rise of uh, British wine. And, I mean, British wine are... Good, there is no shame to say it. Well, there is no... I enjoy a good, uh, a good British sparkling wine, like Night in Burr or Chapel Don, great product. There is no thing to be ashamed of. And, yeah, I mean, for French... You will not... I'm here since 10 years, so, you know, I embrace... Uh, I embrace so you're, you're more yes, or less English, yes, basically, I, I, Exactly. I embrace uh, the trend in a country. There is no thing... I don't challenge anyone on that. OK. And well, they, do, they do say with climate change as well, that the, the soil in England, the terroir, will become the best for producing champagne. It is, it is, yeah, yeah. The grape will be mature at the right time, the harvest will be better, a bit more sweet as well. Yeah, I agree with that. And, and so, I mean, do the French celebrate New Year as much as we do over here? We seem to go a bit bonkers over here, especially with the alcohol, and French do seem to be a bit more restrained with the alcohol. Yeah, I think many... I mean, if you go to Paris, I don't think there are that much restrained, but if you go to smaller cities, let's say... Uh, it's more... Um, we are more like weekend people than... You know, London, it's a Monday to Sunday city. I'm from Marseille, and um, in Marseille, you feel the city going to... to be a little bit busy from, let's say, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, but it's still very shy. I think London got a great vibe and a great... Uh, I mean, a great party mind, and it's very nice to see people going for after work on a daily basis, you know? So, an economy is working. You know, so I think it's this is a good mindset, it's a great mindset. But obviously, they need to drink responsibly. That mm -hmm. we need to mention it, and sometimes our guests forget. You know. Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, Jean, thank you very much, uh, Jean Vital. A cocktail. How do people get in touch with you? I mean, I, I got, mean is um, there a website they can go yeah, to? Or? I got an Instagram page named uh, Cocktail Circus. Okay. With uh, under uh, underscore at the end. Yeah. And this is where I like just display my craft, basically. Perfect. Right, and it'll be on uh, the GB News website as well. Now, um, that's oh, well. Thank you so much, my panel today: Charlie Rowley and Benjamin Butterworth, and Rafe for joining me in the cocktail tasting, which was all just. Nana is up next, though. So, Nana, what's coming up oh, with a cocktail and looking gorgeous? <laughs> oh, Why lovely. would I not expect anything else? Nana, what's coming up on your wonderful show? Well, we've got loads. We're talking immigration, uh, but I'm also going to be doing a monologue on those XL bully dogs. I just don't think they're just not pets, are they? I don't... I don't get why anyone would want one um, in their house. We'll be talking about that. Uh, plus, loads more. Uh, Daniel Moylan will be joining me alongside Norman Baker. We're going to have a head-to-head. -head. Loads of things to talk about. The royal family as well. What is the point of them? Uh, all of that on the way. Thank you so much, Nana. Don't go anywhere. Watch Nana. It's been a brighter outlook with Bob Solar. Sponsors of weather on GB News. Hello there, welcome to your latest GB News weather forecast. I'm Craig Snell. We're looking ahead to the first day of 2024 and for most of us we will see some further rain but there will be some sunshine on offer. Back to here and now, we still have this area low pressure dominating the UK. Note the tightly packed isobars across the south indicating some fairly blustery conditions as we see out 2023. And for most of us, as we approach midnight, really it's going to be a mix of clear spells and scattered showers. It may briefly turn drier for a time for the bells across parts.